referee is Ben Dreith. He has brought the captains to the center of the field. There's the coin toss. The visiting Oakland Raiders call the toss. And they have won the toss. And they want the ball. Hank Stram, if I won the toss, I would kick off. And you agree, don't you? Yes, I would definitely, with the wind the way it is and the weather like it is, I would much rather play defense than I would offense on the initial series of the game. Both teams on the field will soon have the opening kickoff. This spots for the guys who wrap the ankles, take the knees, soak the elbows, and massage the egos. Here's to the trainers. There's no one else who's done quite the way you do. Well, you know it is the only what you say is what you do. I see more tape in a year than Wall Street. Yeah, here's to the train. They're always the first at the ballpark and the last to leave. So go ahead, guys. After the game, dip into your own ice bucket for that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. It's for you. For all you do, the king of beers is coming through. Yes, sir. For all you unsung heroes, you've got it coming. For all you do. This bug's for you. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. The kickoff will be by Don Cockroft from our right to our left, and he's kicking with a very formidable wind blowing off the lake at the back of the Cleveland Browns. The kickoff will go to either Arthur Whittington or Keith Moody. I wouldn't be surprised to see Cockroft put this one into the end zone, although he doesn't ordinarily kick that deep. And as Hank Stram said, he'd rather be playing defense than offense here at the start of the game. Hey, well, it's... Toes level go with that ball into the end zone, too, Jack. The ball is just blown off of the kicking tee, and they may necessitate someone to hold the ball. The referee is Ben Dreith, Bob Boylston, the umpire, headlinesman Dave Hawk, the line judge is Ron Potchin, back judge Jim Poole, Edward, the side judge, the field judge is Pat Millett. There's quite a crowd on hand considering the elements here in Cleveland this afternoon. Cockroft, the straightaway kicker, boots the ball high and quite short. And it is taken by one of the up men at the 25, and the progress by Christensen is out across the 30-yard line and near the 31, and Oakland will start from there with Jim Plunkett at the controls. Plunkett will have Kenny King and Mark Van Egan in his lineup. It was a six-yard return on a very short kick, even though Cockroft was kicking with the wind. I wonder if Kenny King will be able to turn corners on a frozen field like this, Hank. You know, Rudy, he isn't much of a cutter anyhow. He's kind of a slasher, and uh, it, it, watching him run, he likes to run everything outside, and he doesn't turn the ball up the field nearly as well as he will eventually. So this should be a problem for him this, this afternoon. Plunkett is under center. He gives the ball to Van Egan. Van Egan stumbles, gets a yard, and then two yards over the left guard. Dave Dalby is the center for Oakland, flanked by Gene Upshaw and Mickey Marvin, the guards. Art Shell and Henry Lawrence are the tackles. The tight end is Raymond Chester. The wide receivers are Cliff Branch and Bob Chandler. In the backfield, Kenny King, Mark Van Egan, and Jim Plunkett. And they gave Van Egan only one yard, and it's second down and nine. The one thing that you have to be very careful of in a game like this one, with the weather like it is, that you don't cough up the ball, make some kind of an offensive mistake, and reduce the size of the field for the opposition. Three-man front for Cleveland. Here's Plunkett back to throw on second down. Plenty of time to the left sideline. Way over through his receiver, Kenny King. And it will be third down and nine. Kenny King was open in the flat that time, Jack, and he waited a little bit too long to uh, deliver the football. Was looking to throw the ball to Branch downfield. He was faded. He was covered. And he decided to throw the ball outside, but by then he was covered. Talking about uh, Kenny King, and it goes over the top and out of bounds. Yeah, Clay Matthews on him. Cleveland has Henry Bradley playing the nose guard, flanked by Harris and Lyle Alzado. It is third down and nine, Oakland from their own 32-yard line here at the outset of the game. Plunkett likely to throw. He's going to throw. There is no pass rush. He stands and throws over the middle and overthrew his man incomplete. And a big hit was made by the defensive lineman Ron Bolton after the ball had blown by. Punting time for Oakland here in the early going. A one-yard gain, two incompleted pass, a punt coming up by Ray Guy, and this may be one of the critical aspects of this playoff game. Yeah, I think you're right, Jack. I think uh, you're talking about the kicking game. No question about that. Luckily, uh, Oakland has a fantastic kicker in uh, Ray Guy, 
but even with uh, even with the great ability and skill that he has, it's still going to be very difficult to get much on the ball with, with the way that wind is blowing. He is a pro bowler. Christensen will snap the ball. A guy has averaged more than 43 yards a kick. Keith Wright and Dino Hall are back inside their 30, waiting for the ball for the Cleveland Browns. It's a fine kick by Ray Guy, and it is taken at the 26-yard line, and the return is only out to the 30-yard line by Keith Wright. The Browns get the ball. It came loose after the tackle was made. Cleveland has it at their own 30-yard line. They'll have the wind advantage here in the first quarter. Mario Salato was downfield. The linebacker for Oakland to make the tackle. 13.54 remaining in the first quarter. No score. There was a 42-yard punt. This broadcast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or the use of this broadcast without the express written consent of the Cleveland Browns and the weatherman is prohibited. I wouldn't be a bit surprised, Jack, to see them throw long on the very first play of the game. They like to play bump and run defense, man for man. I'm talking about Oakland. And Cypher is liable to come back and try to throw something deep. Uh oh, here he comes. He sets up. He throws long down the sideline. Incomplete. He threw a little too quickly for Dave Logan, his wide receiver, to get by the uh, cornerback on the left side. One yeah. thing about one thing about the Oakland Raiders, you know, they play very, very well defensively. They do a great job on pass defense. But uh, any time that you see a team that plays man for man and bump and run like they do, you got to throw the ball up on top. Often enough, you throw enough stuff against the wall, some of it's got to stick. And that's got to be the attitude, I think, of the Cleveland Browns here today. They've got to throw the ball and especially try to throw a ball deep early in this game. Logan goes to the left side. Reggie Rucker is the wide receiver to the right. And here is a second down running play popping out across to the 35-yard line for about four yards for Cleveland, carried by Mike Pruitt who gained more than 1,000 yards this year. Calvin Hill is a, is a uh, surprise starter at the tailback position, number 35. He's playing the deep position in the I formation, and they're doing that because they feel he is very intelligent, can pick up all the blitzes and all the unusual things that the Oakland Raiders throw at them, plus the fact that he's an excellent receiver and an excellent runner from the I-formation. Dave Browning made that last tackle. Oakland, like Cleveland, uses that three-man front. It's third and five for the Browns from their own 35. Zipe is straight back to throw. He is rushed. He steps up. He throws. Incomplete. There was double coverage on the intended receiver downfield, Calvin Hill, out of the backfield. And punting time for the Browns. We have yet to have a completed pass or a first down. Rod Martin, the linebacker, was covering on that play. We played two minutes, and uh, the punter... For Cleveland is in there, Johnny Evans. His average punts, 38 yards per kick with none blocked this year. So the Oakland Raiders will get the ball for the second time. It's a rather bright day here in Cleveland. The lights are on at the stadium. The field frozen. The temperature is sitting at one degree. And the punt. And it was partially blocked. It's a low kick bouncing down inside the Oakland 35 and down to the 30. And down to the 28, and Evans and the Browns got quite a break on that one. The ball might have been touched by Ted Hendricks, who was coming on to the kicker, but it was a Cleveland roll, and uh, Oakland starts back at their 28 after a 37-yard putt. With a score, nothing, nothing, let's take time out. Sam, as your accountant, I'm advising you to do something about your office copy. Oh, what's wrong, George? You keep replacing them all the time. That's expensive, Sam, and peculiar. Oh, but my copying needs keep changing, so I have to keep changing my copier. That's the way life is. You have to get a big, expensive, inflexible copier that's just as big, just as expensive, and just as inflexible as your last big, expensive, inflexible copier. That's life? That isn't life? Sam, next time, get a sharp 800 series plain paper copier with microprocessor technology. Oh? The basic the copier, the high-speed copier, the reduction copier, it doesn't matter. No. Sharp copiers are all flexible. Uh -huh. As your needs change, you don't go out and get another copier, you add options. Uh -huh. You need automatic document feeding, you get an option. You need electronic collating, you get an option, uh -huh. you see? Yeah. <laughs> flexible. Now I see what they mean when they say sharp people plan ahead. For more information, call your local authorized sharp dealer or 800-447-4700. In Illinois, call 800-322-4400. Well, yesterday, as most everybody knows by this time, San Diego won over Buffalo, and the winner of this game will play at San Diego one week from today. Here is Plunkett with Van Egan and King from his own 28-yard line. And uh, give to Van Egan nothing. He got about a yard over the middle, and that's all. 
And apparently, Hank, it is quite difficult for the runners to gain any traction at all on this field. Well, it's not so bad for the runners. It's extremely tough for the offensive line. They have no way in the world to get any real traction and get any real push. And for that, for that reason, there was no surge on that last play at all. And the back had no place to run except right up the back of one of the offensive linemen. That's a very difficult thing. It's a lot easier to throw the ball under these conditions than it is to run the ball. Marshall Harris made the tackle for the Browns, a one-yard game for Oakland. Actually, a half a yard. We'll call it second and nine, and Plunkett's going to throw again. He swings it out on a screen, and it is caught by Kenny King. And he moves across the 30-yard line, is bumped out of bounds at the 33. It'll be third down and uh, five coming up for the Raiders. Clinton Burrell on the corner for the Browns made the hit, and that's the first completed pass that we've had this afternoon. R.L. Jackson, the inside linebacker, was in on a blitz and got to Plunkett, but not until he had rid himself of the ball. 12.08 left in the first quarter and no score. Third down and five, Oakland at their own 33. King had a chance to cut inside that time. He elected to go outside, had the ball in the wrong arm. When he got hit, it popped loose. Unfortunately, he was off the field of play, or else he'd have lost the ball on a fumble. Five defensive backs for the Browns on third and five. Oakland flung it back to throw. They pick up the rush. The pass way downfield, overthrown to Chandler. And it is incomplete. Almost picked off by Ron Bolden on the corner for Cleveland, but the pass has been ruled incomplete by the one official, although the Browns think that they have the ball. If so, it is an interception by Ron Bolden, and that's the way it is. The one official called it incomplete. The others indicated that Ron Bolton had indeed intercepted the ball, and Cleveland has it at their own 27. It's hard to understand why he threw the ball like he did that time. There was no chance whatsoever for Chandler to make the catch. It was double coverage. Uh, the two defensive backs got back there in good shape. He threw the ball, and uh, it was intercepted. And now, of course, the Browns have, have possession on about the 27. 12 minutes remaining in the first quarter. A timeout on the field with a score. Cleveland nothing and Oakland nothing. You know, there's nothing more aggravating than having trouble trying to start your car in a cold winter day. The fault starts and stops and stalls. Well, heat fuel system dryer and antifreeze eliminate all that nonsense. Get your car ready for winter. Use heat to take out moisture caused by the hot, humid weather of this past summer. Heat eliminates moisture caused coughs and sputters right now. Just add heat to your gas tank. It ensures quick starts and smooth, trouble-free engine performance, even on those icy below-zero days. So buy protection right now. Buy a supply of heat fuel system dryer and antifreeze. A small investment for a driver's peace of mind. It's sold everywhere. Just look for the distinctive yellow bottle with the long, easy-to-pour neck. Heat. H-E-E-T. Don't stall. Buy heat. Browns ball after the interception by Bolton. They're at their own 27-yard line with Sipe, the quarterback. They're in the eye formation with Mike Pruitt and Calvin Hill playing the tailback spot. And on first down, it's Pruitt. He moves to the 30-yard line. He got three yards, second and seven. Matusak playing the left uh, defensive end. And Reggie Kinlaw starting in the middle for the Oakland Raiders. We're in there defensively, 11.45 remaining in the quarter. And uh, no score. The interception by the Cleveland Browns cornerback, Ron Bolden, was his seventh of the year. Second down and seven for the Browns. Wide receivers are both to the right side. Logan and Reggie Rucker. The knife who likes to gun the ball is under center. And he gives the ball to Pruitt again, and this time a yard or two out near the 34-yard line. And it's going to be third down for the Browns. Third down and three. I would sure take advantage of trying to throw the ball, try to make something big happen with the wind, uh, and try to get the ball to the outside receivers. They're in a slot formation uh, with their two fine receivers, Logan and Rucker, on the same side of the football, the tight end, uh, Ozzie Newsom on the left side. But I would sure try to get the ball deep outside to those outside people early in this football game to try to make something happen. Cleveland trying to get the first, first down of the afternoon. They have it at the 34. It's third down and three. There is no score. The first three and a half minutes of this game have been played. Seif gives the ball on the ground to Pruitt, and he did not get the first down. Went over the right side, and apparently is, uh, well, we'll have to wait and see what kind of forward progress they give him. He got more than I thought he would, 
And it's close enough for the referee, Ben Dreith, to sort things out and perhaps measure. Dave Browning was the tackler for Oakland, helped by Owens and Matt Millen, the inside linebacker. And that Millen is quite a story. Some rookie for Oakland. Yeah, he's really a great player, and they made the first down easy. And uh, I would think right now, Jack, after making the first first down of the game, pretty good field position, I would think maybe they would try to throw the ball deep on this first and ten situation to try to make some kind of a big play and try to make something happen. The sun emerges here in Cleveland. The temperature is one degree. The wide receivers are Rucker and uh, Dave Logan. The tight end is Ozzie Newsom, and back to throw his sight. Looking downfield, he zips it over the middle. It's caught at midfield. Now it's incomplete. It hit the deck. It was in the arms of Logan for a moment, but it oozed out of there. Incomplete at midfield, second down and 10. The important thing is that he was open and should have made the catch, and that should offer them encouragement as far as knowing that they ought to be able to throw the ball well against the Oakland Raiders. Very difficult, Hank, for those defensive backs to stay with the receivers on their cuts, isn't it? And it's awful difficult also for the defensive linemen to get any kind of a rush. They really haven't rushed the passer that much or that well all year long with the three linemen. They've had the blitz to get to the quarterback and uh, so for that reason, the Cleveland Browns ought to have plenty of time to throw the football. Second, down and, second down and ten for the Browns. Here is Sipe on a delay to Mike Pruitt. Slips and falls and loses two yards back at the 35-yard line. It was quickly covered by Hendrick and others when he slipped and fell at the Cleveland 35, and that makes it third down and 12. The Browns coming into this game was third in total offense, 14 rushing. Number two passing. On the other side of the football, the Raiders on defense, sixth in total defense, number two against the run, and number 10 against the pass. So from a statistical standpoint, it's very obvious that the Cleveland Browns' advantage would be to throw the ball more so than to try to run it, especially with the field conditions like they are. It is third down and 12. Rutgers to the left, Logan to the right. Three-man, four-man rush for Oakland. Here is Sipe on a screen, gets it out to Calvin Hill. Matt Millen, the linebacker, takes him down with a good tackle at the 40-yard line, and Cleveland will have to putt. Millen was one-on-one -on -one with Calvin Hill, who couldn't escape the big guy, and he's 6'2", a 260-pounder, a rookie out of Penn State. And he is the best find, one of the best, not only for Oakland, but in the National Football League this year. You know, one thing interesting about the Oakland defense, last year they averaged giving up 4.4 uh, per play. This year they've reduced it to 3.4, which is really a remarkable improvement in one year. Keith Moody is back to get the punt of Johnny Evans. The Oakland Raiders will get the ball for the third time. Evans steps up and punches a line drive. It lands at the Oakland 30, bounces to the 20, bounces to the 15, goes to the 10, picked up by Moody, and he's knocked down at the 11-yard line. Big coverage by the Cleveland Browns with 8.23 remaining in the first quarter. Oakland is all the way back at their 11-yard line with a score. It was a punt of 50 yards for the Browns, and with a score, the Browns nothing, the Raiders nothing. Let's take time out. Well, it's knowing you can count on us. We're going to get you where you're going, near or far. It's knowing that we're trying hard. We're going to take the worry out of renting cars. It's knowing Avis has the cars, the service, and the rate you want, so you will find. And Avis, Avis features GM cars, like Oldsmobile Cutlass. You can make light work of sweeping even heavy dirt with an Empire push broom from True Value Hardware Stores. Hi, Pat Summerall to tell you their heavy-duty 18-inch outdoor push broom features sturdy Palmyra bristles designed to easily sweep wet or dry leaves, metal shavings, rubbish, or even light snow from your patio or other rough surfaces. And the two-position handle allows more even bristle wear. Get the Empire 18-inch outdoor push broom for just $3.99 at participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. Oakland started at their 31. They started at their 28. As they get the ball for the third time, they're at their 11-yard line. Turnovers are critical in this game. We've had none. It's first down for the Raiders. They give to Van Egan, and he gets about three yards at the very most over the left side, out to the 14-yard line. That's what he did pick up, three yards, second down and seven. 8-10 remaining in the first quarter, no score. R.L. Jackson, a very active inside linebacker for the Browns, made the tackle. Oakland has been unable to get a first down. Cleveland has one. Second down and seven from their 14 for the Raiders. 
playing in their white, silver, and black. Here's Plunkett on a delay to Kenny King. Going left, wrestled down by Ambrose, who jumps on his back, takes him down after a gain of about one yard. It is going to be third down and uh, six for the Raiders. And in fact, he was hit right at the line of scrimmage, making it third and seven. And after the Raiders punt this time, if they fail to make a first down on this possession, Cleveland should be in fine shape with regard to field position. And Cleveland sees, seems to have a little more animation out there than the Oakland Raiders do. Yeah, I, and I think that's natural, especially so playing at home. And about 70,000 are on hand. Plunkett about to throw on third and seven. Ample time throws, and it's caught beyond the 20. Incomplete. As the hit was made, the ball came loose. Kenny King coughed it up. Cleveland would have recovered it had it been a fumble, but it was incomplete. And the Raiders will ask Ray Guy to take him out of a hole. You know what happened that time, Jack? He tried to catch the ball with his body uh, as a backstop. And any time you try to do that, if the ball hits your body first, especially by the shoulder pad area, it hits the shoulder pads and bounces right out. And that's exactly what happened. Had he tried to catch the ball with his hands, he would have made the reception and maintained possession. Keith Wright and Dino Hall are back at their 45-yard line. Todd Christensen is the punt snapper. And the Raiders didn't have their proper punting unit on the field. They take a little time to get them out there. They may not beat the 30-second clock. They're down to two seconds. There's the snap. Ray Guy kicks it from the five and drives it into Cleveland territory. Way back at the 39. With the ball is Dino Hall to the 40 to the 45 and goes out of bounds. He went out at the Cleveland 48 and did a fine job of fielding a, an excellent punt by Ray Guy, who kicked it from his five-yard line. Ball took it on the 39 and returned it out to the 48-yard line. A 37-yard punt by Ray Guy. That was 54 left in the first quarter. That really was a great kick by Ray Guy into that wind. Good spiral, and it got down the field in good shape. And with the score, Oakland nothing, Cleveland nothing. Let's take time out. Hi, this is Tom DeLeon of the Cleveland Browns. The other day, my wife Mindy and I visited a neighborhood center here in Cleveland, the Merrick House. It's one of 18 neighborhood centers supported by the United Way here in Cleveland. They have daycare centers for infants with working mothers, special guidance classes for high school dropouts, programs for senior citizens. These places make you feel glad you're a part of the United Way. Thanks to them, the United Way works here. And thanks to you, it works for all of us, the United Way. The preceding message on behalf of the United Way was furnished by the National Football League. That was a 47-yard punt by Ray Guy, which finds Cleveland now at their 48 as they get the ball for the third time. And they've been in better field position than the Raiders have. Each team has had possession three times. Yeah, so Browns got it initially on the 30, then they got it on the 27. Now they have it on the 48. In the first quarter, Cleveland has the wind advantage as Oakland won the toss, took the ball, and failed to pick up a first down. I'm sure they'll, they'll uh, pump one up here, Jack. I'd be very surprised if they don't. Some kind of a pass on a first and 10 situation. It is Brian Seip who passed for more than 4,100 yards this year. He has Pruitt and Calvin Hill in the backfield. Here's a first down pass. No pressure. Throws long downfield. Logan got it. Dropped it. Inside the 25, he had it and lost it. And you can tell from the numerous plays we've had in the early going as... Logan ended up in a snow pile out of bounds, and it's very difficult to catch that ball, Hank, but you couldn't ask for a better throw than Sipe gave him. No, that's right. Exactly right. And uh, Dwayne Osteen was covering on the play. They were in a slot, uh, regular formation that time, and he made an inside-outside move and had him licked. The ball was right on the money, but uh, he dropped the ball. Later today, Lindsey Nelson, Jim Kelly will be on hand in Atlanta where the Dallas Cowboys play. You'll hear that game on CBS Radio. Second down and 10, Cleveland. Rucker is to the right. Logan to the left. Newsom the tight end on the right side. Here is Seib looking to throw. Throws long downfield. Calvin Hill cannot get it. It hit the defensive man in the back. Covering on the play was the linebacker, Rod Martin, and the ball hit him in the back. It'll be third down and 10. Hit him right in the head, uh, specifically right in the back of the helmet. It's pretty accurate on the part of Seib. 6.41 left in the first quarter and no score. Temperature one degree here in St. Louis. We're high atop Cleveland Stadium overlooking frozen Lake Erie. Sipe is two out of seven.
for nine yards, and more than one ball has been dropped. Yeah, I think three specifically have been dropped, and but I like their approach. They feel they, the best thing they do is throw the football, and even though the weather is like it is, it's much better to try to throw the ball than to try to run it. Third down and ten. Oakland shows the blitz, and it's a four-man rush. Sight pass time. Throws it over the middle, and it's intercepted. Who's there? That's Lester Hayes again intercepting and being down at the Oakland 35. He had intercepted 13 during the regular season, two in the wild card playoff game last week, one here today, two others were called back. He is murder on defense. Yeah, he really is, and he's got tremendous recovery speed. The ball was thrown a little bit behind Rucker. Rucker was coming inside. The ball was thrown behind him, and for that reason, Lester Hayes was able to pick up his 14th interception. And Oakland goes right to work from their 35-yard line. They have yet to pick up a first down. It is Plunkett with Van Egan and Kenny King. One thing that uh, Oakland does not do very well, and that is lay the ball off to the backs on passing situations. They like to throw the ball down the field vertically. They don't like to throw it horizontally that much. And uh, for that reason, I think they could have some problems with the way the Cleveland Browns play zone defenses. They look, they look like they're double covering branch as much as they possibly can on obvious passing situations. And any time... You do that, you must dump the ball off to the tight end or to the backs, and Plunkett does not do that very well. It is second down and seven as Kenny King picked up three over the right side. And from the Oakland 38, here is Kenny King being hit at the 39. He got only a yard, and it is going to be third down and long for the Oakland Raiders. Third down and six. They're trying for their first first down, and they just can't move it on the ground. Well, I think their approach is they haven't had very good field position. I think they feel they, they just want to make sure they don't do anything drastic and turn the ball over for Cleveland. They hopefully will uh, uh, do the best they possibly can until they get better field position, and then hopefully when they get the win in the second quarter, we'll do a much better job of moving the football. Branch tiptoes to the left side. Bob Chandler, the wide receiver to the right. Ray Chester, the tight end, is on the right side. Cleveland disguises their defense, and Plunk is back to throw. Ample time. Throws long downfield. Uh -huh. Branch is wide open. Can't get it. Incomplete inside the 30-yard line. He just couldn't get there, and it sailed about a foot out of his reach. He had whipped Clinton Burrell on the corner. He was wide open. The pass incomplete, and now Ray Guy will punt the ball for the third time. And Cleveland will get possession once more, this time a little deeper in their territory. As Oakland has yet to pick up a first down. 5.14 left in the first quarter. That game clock moving very slowly because of the numerous passes. Because it's frozen. <laughs> Keith Wright and Dino Hall are back waiting for this punt. A low snap. Guy handles it, walks up, and kicks it. Oh, not too hot. Kick another it ball that time. at the 30-yard line, and it will not be touched by the Browns. It is down by Oakland at the Cleveland 30-yard line with 5.05 remaining in the quarter. And Morris Bradshaw, wide receiver, was downfield to down the punt, which was only 31 yards by Ray Guy. We saw it yesterday, Hank, in Philadelphia. A lot of times the kickers, both kicking off and punting, really got into the ball, but the heavy air just stymies it almost all together. And the other thing, you know, that makes it a big difference when you drop the ball with the wind blowing like it, like it is here this afternoon, it drops it off course just enough where you don't hit the sweet spot of the football, and that makes a big difference. Logan comes to the left, and Rucker is to the right for the Browns, who are back at their 30-yard line. No score in this game. Well, let's throw it again on first and 10. I think they should. There and it there is. There it go. Sipes sets up to throw. Steps up and throws long, and Rucker can't get it just out of his reach at the 30-yard line of Oakland. He had uh, gotten behind Lester Hayes on the corner. Lester Hayes, who intercepted a moment ago, was covering on the fleet-footed Reggie Rucker. Second and ten. Let's pause five seconds for stations to identify themselves on the CBS radio network. This is WBBM Chicago. News Radio 78. I think this is the sort of game we anticipated with the weather as it is. Yeah, no question about that. And, uh, you know, the both teams, especially Cleveland, uh, uh, they've had some opportunities, had people open that just haven't been able to get the ball or catch it when they did have the opportunity to make the catch. Sipe is two out of nine. He stays on the ground on this trip and a good surge out across the 35-yard line as it was carried by Mike Pruitt. Gives Cleveland uh, six yards on the pickup, making it third and four. I would run an awful lot of plays. When I ran the football, I would run basically all of my straight-ahead stuff right at the defense because the back has a hard time running from right to left or left to right. 
and trying to cut on this frozen field. The best way to run is to run straight ahead. That was the first time they ran that kind of a play, and they picked up a nice gain of seven yards on first and ten. Calvin Hill is the only man to catch a ball for the Cleveland Browns. They are faced with third and three now at their 37-yard line. Here is a delay and uh, no first down as Pruitt carried the ball. He was stopped by the middle of the line. John was Matusak cracking down, Reggie Kinlaw holding forth, and moving up was the linebacker Salato to help with the defense. A two-yard gain, fourth and one, punting time for Cleveland. No score. Johnny Evans in to do the kicking. Many folks predicted that the kickers, Johnny Evans and Ray Guy, would decide the outcome of this game. And it may evolve to that. 340 remaining in the first quarter, no score. Waiting for the center snap. And Sullivan snaps it. Evans kicks it. It's a terrible kick. Bounces at the 40, down to the 35, covered by the Browns at the Oakland 27-yard line. Evans with a nasty kick, but he got a good result, and Oakland is back at their 27-yard line after a 34-yard kick. Most of it rolling and bouncing. Looks like he kicked that with his knee, Jack. <laughs> 3.25 <laughs> left in the first quarter. Folks, postseason NFL action continues. The CBS Radio Sports brings you the AFC and NFC Conference Championship games next Sunday, a week from today, January 11th, leading to the Super Bowl on January 25th. Also to be broadcast by CBS Radio on the Pro Bowl in Honolulu on February 1st. Hear it here on CBS Radio. Plunkett on first down from his 27th. A give to Kenny King to the 30-yard line and comes out to the 33 with the best gain of the day from scrimmage for the Oakland Raiders. And I'm sure, Hank, they, they want to give that ball to King numerous times, hopeful that he'll break one because if he gets free, no one's going to catch him. Yeah, he's a strong runner, runs through tacklers well, has good balance and excellent speed. He ran one from scrimmage, 89 yards for a touchdown this year, and he just picked up five yards on the play. Second down and five for Plunkett and company. Tight end Raymond Chester, the right side. Van Egan, he has stopped cold and has to work hard to get a yard. It's going to be third down and three for the Oakland Raiders. They're out to their 34-yard line. Lyle Alzado and R.L. Jackson combined for the Cleveland tackle. 235 remaining in the first quarter and no score. And Whittington is the halfback now along with Van Egan. down and three. Arthur Whittington checks in. He's a speed merchant. Little fell out of SMU. See how Plunkett tries to get the three yards he needs. He's 0 for 5 and he's back to throw. He looks, looks, looks right and in, throws right wide in, open right to in. Chester. He caught the ball, dropped it when he was hit. Cleveland with very aggressive hitting. This one by Tom Darden and Chester did everything but catch the ball. You know, Jack, the way they're playing, they're talking about Cleveland, they're double covering branch all the time on passing situations, which means that the tight end is going to have to be open along with the backs away from that split inside, away from Branch. That time, the tight end was open. He had the ball, should have caught it, but dropped it as he got hit by the defensive halfback. And it is Wright and Dino Hall back inside their 30, waiting for the Ray Guy punt. Guy has kicked three. He's averaged 40 yards. Plunkett is 0 for 6, but it's not all his fault. That last one should have been caught deep into Cleveland territory. Ray Guy kicks it away. It's a dandy. Uh, and it drives the receiver back to the 20-yard line. That's right. Running left. Has some running room. Uh -oh. Gets some blocks to the 25 to the 30. He's out to the 35 to the 39-yard line. And if the tight end had made a block uh, for him, talking about Cleveland's tight end, McDonald Oden, he would have sailed right down the sideline for even more yards, as it was. And a player is injured. The return came to the 40-yard line, a 47-yard punt, a 20-yard return. The injured player is up on his feet. Cleveland has the ball at their own 40. We have 155 left in the first quarter, and there is no score. Did you see that blocker standing around, Hank? Yeah, that's right. He was really a spectator, and had he thrown the block, as you mentioned, he'd have maybe gone for the touchdown. But in conjunction with that, Oakland did a very poor job in the coverage. They got bunched up in the middle. All of them were very, very close. They didn't maintain their lanes, and for that reason, it was a big seam on that left side. They're at the Cleveland 40-yard line. They've been throwing on first down almost in every possession. There is no score. Here's Sight back to throw. No pressure with that three-man rush over the middle. This one's caught inside the 45 of Oakland. The play goes down to the 40 for a big gain. 
and it was hauled in by Reggie Rucker. He was knocked down right at the Oakland 40-yard line. So Cleveland picks up 20 yards on the pass play to Rucker. And they ought to come right back and throw it again, Jack. That's the thing they do best. And with man-for-man -man coverage that they're getting most of the time, and Burgess Owens plays very deep in the middle of the formation to protect the post, but that uh, area on the outside and also short underneath is very, uh, very obviously open. Here's Cleveland with a first down, and they stay on the ground, and the running play to Pruitt gets only a couple. Down to the Oakland 38 going over the right side. Hank, you mentioned it before, even uh, under normal circumstances, much less on a frozen field, Oakland just doesn't get pressure with their three-man rush. No, they really don't. And that's true today, those Cleveland offensive linemen, and they're good to start with, with Tom DeLeon, Henry Shepard, Joe DeLamalure, Doug, Doug Deacon, and Cody Risen. They are giving Sipe all the time he needs. Pruitt has carried seven times, 20 yards. Second and seven at the Oakland 38 for the Browns. It's Pruitt and Calvin Hill in the backfield. Here's Sipe back to throw. Looks, dumps it off to the sideline, and it is caught. Out of bounds at the 32 of Oakland. And a first down with the tight end, Ozzie Newsom catching the ball. Not a first down, third and one coming up. 30 seconds left on the first quarter clock. They're using a slot formation an awful lot with uh, the outside receivers, Lo Logan and Rucker, on the right side. And then they keep the tight end, uh, Ozzie Newsom, in tight. And they think that they can work on the defensive back, the right cornerback, Osteen, and also the uh, safety man on that side. Two tight ends are in there for Cleveland, including McDonald Oden, and uh, Cleo Miller is in the backfield. Straight ahead left, it looks like. Third and one, and uh, Pruitt carries for a first down to the open 30-yard line. Maybe a bit more than that. Burgess Owen, Bob Nelson tackled him. It's a Cleveland first down, and Sipe saying to the guys, let's get back into the huddle and talk it over with the 30 seconds that we have. And only 13 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Now it's down to 10. Cleveland wants to run another play they want to with the wind at the back. Yeah, they want to take one good shot, try to get a long play. Before, the, before they have to change the quarters. First down, sight back to throw. Looks there throw long end zone. Rucker, kick. Did he catch it? No, incomplete. There was a little bumping around in the end zone. Rucker almost caught it. It'll be second down and 10. Covering Burgess Owens and Dwayne Osteen. You second and 10 for Cleveland coming you, up. You couldn't throw the ball better than he threw it that time. He looked like he had it, and as he was trying to put it away, lost it. Beautiful pass, though, by sight. The ball is at the open 29, second and 10 Cleveland when we start the second quarter. That's the end of the first quarter with a score. Cleveland nothing and uh, Oakland uh, nothing. At 50 miles an hour, half of the average car's horsepower, and hence half of the average car owner's gasoline dollar is spent doing nothing but pushing air out of the way. Kind of makes you want to cry, doesn't it? Well, cheer up. Because we at Buick have been working on the problem, as witnessed by the 1981 Buick Regal. It's not only better looking, it's even more aerodynamic than last year's. And what that does for economy is quite rewarding. In fact, the new Regal offers an estimated MPG of 21 and 30 highway. Remember, use the estimated MPG of 21 for comparison. The actual mileage you get may be different. Actual highway mileage will probably be less than the estimated highway fuel economy. See a Buick dealer about buying or leasing a new Regal. And let the air push somebody else around for a change. Wouldn't you really Dr. Gonzo Gates on Trapper John, M.D. Make the rounds with me on CBS Sunday night. We'll stop by and see Alice and the gang at Mel's Diner, but let me give you a free word of medical advice. Don't eat the chili. Next, we'll look in on the Jefferson for the laughs are catching. Then it's Trapper John, M.D. starring Pernell Roberts and me. It's all on CBS television Sunday night starting at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. It'll make you feel good. You and CBS, you're looking good. Temperature in Cleveland is still one degree above zero. Second down and ten for Cleveland at the Oakland 29-yard line. The Browns going into the wind here in the second quarter. The wind has diminished somewhat, by the way. They got some room on the left side. Sight back to throw. He looks and throws. And uh, incomplete to Ozzie Newsom is tight end inside the Oakland 10-yard line. 
and good strong coverage by the Raiders, Dwayne Osteen. Osteen has kicked around with a couple of clubs, including the Rams. I know you like him, Hank. Okay, very good defensive back, and uh, the Oakland Raiders like him tremendously. And he stepped right in there and has done a good job and beat out Monty Jackson, who everybody thought was uh, an all-pro defensive back. But he's beat, beaten him out and uh, has really done a super job. Comes into the game with three interceptions. Sipe is four out of 13 for 34 yards with one intercepted. The Browns have picked up two first downs out of seven third down tries. You know, whether the uh, Oakland Raiders play defense with a safety man so deep, crossing pattern should be extremely good. Third and 10 at the Oakland 29. Rucker to the left, Logan to the right. Sipe back to throw, no pressure. Now steps up and throws and incomplete inside the 25. He tried to get it out to his running back, Greg Pruitt, who was in the game, was thrown too high, batted down by Ted Hendricks. The stork came over the top and knocked it down. And it'll be a long field goal try for the Cleveland Browns. The line of scrimmage is the 29, plus 10, 39, plus 7, 46. That's what it will be. By Don Cockroft, a straightaway kicker. And the wind is all but stopped now, Hank. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be too bad. Here's a field goal try by Cockroft, who was 16 out of 26 during the regular season. Paul McDonald will hold the ball. The snap from center a little slow, and the kick is no good. No chance at all. And we were watching Cockroft uh, before the game, and even when he kicked the ball well, it just didn't go anyplace, and the ball will come out to the line of scrimmage, and the Oakland Raiders will take over. And they're still trying for their first first down of the afternoon. We have 14.44 left in the half with a score. The Browns nothing, the Raiders nothing. Let's take time out. This Bud's for you. For being on the job and working hard all day. This Bud's for you. You know that nothing less than best can make it all the way. There's no one else who does it quite the way you do. This one's for you. Because it isn't only what you say, it's what you do. This one's for you. This for you. For all you do, the king of beers is coming through. <laughs> Municipal Stadium, now called Cleveland Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio, the Forest City. The temperature is one degree. We're early in the second quarter, no score. The Oakland Raiders have the ball at their own 29. Plunkett is one out of seven. He's had one intercepted. He is back to throw on first down. Now they have the win. Here's the pass, short, caught out across the 35. The ball is out to the 40-yard line, and an Oakland first down, their very first of the day, and it was caught by Raymond Chester, the tight end, and as soon as they got the wind, Hank Stram, Oakland changed their approach. Yeah, no question about that, and I, as I mentioned earlier, the tight end is going to be a very important factor in this game for Oakland if they continue to play defense like they're playing. I'm talking about the Cleveland Browns, are double-covering Branch, who has such great outstanding speed. They're double-covering him, so that means that the tight end, you have to go to the tight end, to the other side of the field and also to the backs and you'll do a good job of moving the football. On first down, here's the fake running play and plunk it back to throw. He's sacked. Uh -oh, fumble, fumble. Inside fumble. the 30. Picked up by Cleveland. Inside the 25, the Browns have the first turnover of the afternoon at the Oakland 23-yard line and Marshall Harris, the defensive end, fell on the ball and did something that Hank Stram admires very much. He just wanted the ball. He didn't want a touchdown. Yeah, he didn't want to become a hero. All he wanted to do was fall in the football and give his team possession with good field position. That's what you have to do, and you see so much of it during the course of the season. A lineman trying to pick up the ball and run with it, kicks it all over the ballpark, and finally loses possession. That's the only intelligent thing to do. Fall on it. Be satisfied to have the ball on the 23-yard line. Two turnovers by Oakland, one interception, and now a fumble at the Oakland 23 in the first break of the game. 15.57 left in this scoreless first half. Good time to go to Newsom on the left side on Davis, one-on-one. -on -one. Here's Sipe back to throw. He looks, he looks down the middle, and now he runs out of the pocket. He's down to the 20. Chase from behind. He is hit at the 15. He's down to the 14. Stretches out near the 13 as he's downed and may have a first down. 
He was whacked from behind by Matusak and also hit from the front by two other men, but he bounces up and back into the huddle. He had, he had Newsom that time on a crossing pattern coming up from the left side to the right side. Didn't see him, however. Took off and ran, which was the right thing to do under the circumstances, and uh, got a first down. Good play by Brian Seif. He picked up exactly 10 yards. Third first down for the Browns. They're at the Oakland 13-yard line. 13-10 remaining in the half and no score. Another good place for a crossing pattern. They're going to run it this They're time. They're the ball to Calvin, uh, to Cleo Miller. Miller has to struggle to get a yard up the middle. He got to the 12. The best run they made so far in the game, either team, is a play that was run straight ahead. The old-fashioned dive play handoff. He made seven yards. It's a most intelligent way to run. They haven't come back to that play yet, but they ran it once and made seven. I'm surprised that they don't come back if they're going to run and run it again because it's the best way to get into the end zone and toward the goal line straight ahead. Calvin Hill and Mike Pruitt are the Cleveland running backs now. And Logan goes to the left side. Reggie Rucker to the right. Calvin Hill is very dangerous in this area. He stays in ostensibly to block and slips out and can catch the ball. From the 12, Sype looks, throws into the end zone. Incomplete. A one-on-one -on -one battle as the ball was intended for Logan, and he was covered by Dwayne Osteen on the corner. And Osteen was right with him, step for step. A beautiful play defensively. The ball was thrown well, but Osteen was right there to make the play. Had the ball been thrown outside, Jack, there's another illustration. That kind of a play against bump and run, you cannot throw the ball inside. You must throw it over the left shoulder, outside and away from the defensive back. Had he thrown it that way, it could have been a touchdown. It is third down and nine for Cleveland from the Oakland 12. No score in this game. 12-19 remaining. In the half, Ozzie Newsom splits off to the left side. He's covered one-on-one. -on -one. He might go one-on-one -on -one to Newsom with Mike Davis over there trying to cover on Knife the play. looking to throw, looks, throws into the end zone, and it is incomplete, out of bounds. It was caught by Reggie Rucker, but he was out of bounds. He has, puts up a mild argument with the official. The official says, I had you all the way, kid, and you're out of bounds, and Cockroft, who missed a moment ago, from the 46, we'll try a much shorter field goal to try to get the first points of the game. This time, it was Dwayne Osteen covering again on the other side on Rucker. 12-12 left in the half. Paul McDonald will hold the ball. He's capable of throwing it, the former USC quarterback. Cockroft will be kicking from the 20. It's a 30-yard try. He's 0 for 1 in the field goal department. The center snap is good. McDonald gets it down. Cockcroft kicks it, and it is no good. It went off to the left, and we still have goose eggs on the scoreboard with 12.07 left in the half. And the ball will come out to the 20-yard line. The Raiders will take over. There's a timeout on the field with a score still. Cleveland nothing. Oakland nothing. Joe McConnell here from the Chicago Land Buick Dealers. And Walter Payton. Walter, do the Buick Dealers feel that this year's little limousine, the 81 Buick Century, has captured the concept of the limousine? Captured it. It's been improved. Oh, your Buick Dealers are talking your language. We're talking what you want in a car. This year's Buick Century gets 21 miles per gallon in the city. More on the highway. How's that for a little limousine? So if you like the way we're talking... Besides being economical to operate, the Century offers plenty of limousine-like room and lots of elegant touches. Inside and out. Oh, your Buick dealers are talking your language. Compare EPA estimates. Mileage may vary depending on speed, weather, and trip length. For a super deal on the 81 Century, see your Buick dealer. Your Buick dealers are talking your language right now. Oakland Raiders have had one first down. They've had two turnovers, a fumble, a pass interception. Plunkett is two out of nine with a one interception. And he has passed for 15 yards. 12.07 left in the half in a scoreless game. Don Cockcroft missed from 46 yards and just missed from 30 yards. I thought he'd make that one, Hank. Yeah, I did too. And, of course, it's tough when you have good field position. The Browns got it down to the 29 and tried the field goal, as you mentioned, and missed. Then he got it down to the plus 23 and didn't come away with any points. That's tough. Oakland operating with a slight wind advantage now out of the I formation. Here's a give to Van Egan, the fullback, and one yard at the most. 
He tried to go up the middle, and Charlie Hall, the linebacker, cracked down, made the hit. And holding fourth in the middle, Henry Bradley and Lyle Alzado. Marshall Harris, who recovered a fumble a while ago, is playing the left defensive end. Henry Bradley in the middle, Lyle Alzado at the defensive right side, and Alzado a big addition to this Cleveland club. Yeah, no question about that. He played uh, exceptionally good for the Denver Broncos for an extended period of time, came here at an average year last year, but really has played super this year. One yard by Van Egan, and now Kenny King trying to get outside right. If they string the play out, and there's a loss on the play. Up from the safety spot was Clarence Scott, and he took the legs out from under Kenny King, and he lost two yards. There was a great illustration of uh, Kenny King's inability to be able to cut. He doesn't cut very well on natural and uh, ideal circumstances on this kind of a field. Very difficult for him to get upfield once he's headed sideways because he does not really cut that well. As a result of that, the ball is back at the 18-yard line of Oakland, and it's third down and 12. Their wide receivers are Bob Chandler and Branch, and now the tight end, Chester, splits out. Tight end should be the guy they go to here. Plunkett looking to throw, throws long downfield, heavy coverage, and incomplete. He tried to get it to Branch. He was being covered by Burrell, and it's fourth down and punting time for the Oakland Raiders. And even though there is no score... The Browns have dominated this game. I bet Oakland is happy to be scoreless at this point. No question about that. They've thrown enough stuff against the wall. Nothing gets stuck so far, but I think you have to concern yourself with it because they've had opportunities, and if I were Oakland, I'd be concerned about it because some one of these times, they're going to catch one of those passes and make a big play. It is Dino. It is Keith Wright back to... Uh, or Dino Hall back to get the punt. Keith Wright was injured earlier. Dino Hall is the lone safety man. This will be the fifth punt by Ray Guy. And he has an average of 41, almost 42 yards a kick. He'll get it away from his 10. Handles a high snap and uh, kicks it high. Drives it out toward midfield. Hall took it on his 46. Avoided one tackle and then another. And came Fumble. to midfield. Fumbled the ball. Cleveland's fumble got it. at midfield. And Cleveland got it back. So Cleveland continues to dominate. And they have the ball at midfield with 10-34 remaining in the half. With a score, the Browns nothing, the Raiders nothing. Let's take time out. Standard 4.1 liter V6. Available 3.8 liter turbocharged V6. 5.0 liter V8 or 5.7 liter diesel V8. Front wheel drive. The 1981 Buick Riviera. It offers engine choices and engineering features that would do justice to several cars, much less one. And Riviera's list of comforts and conveniences is we submit practically endless. The incredible 1981 Buick Riviera. The kitchen sink not available. Cruise Master Speed Control. This is Larry Zonka. In 13 years of pro football, I've seen some pretty tough guys up close. But I've never seen anything tougher on fuel bills than Whirlpool's tight fist gas furnace. It's an induced draft gas furnace engineered by Whirlpool to meet the high cost of energy. Head on. So if you want to get tough with your fuel bills, get a tight fist gas furnace from Whirlpool. Take it from a guy who knows. This is one tough furnace. So check your yellow pages for the Whirlpool gas furnace dealer nearest you. Brent Musburger will join us here at halftime. 10.34 remaining in the half. No score. Cleveland has the ball at the Oakland 49. Folks, they have determined the starting times for the divisional championship games next Sunday. The NFC game, either at Atlanta or at Philadelphia, will commence at 12.45 p.m. Eastern time. And the AFC game in San Diego will commence at 4.45 Eastern time. Cleveland back to work. A good throw time it. to throw outside here again. Field. Here is Sipe looking to throw. Throws left to Calvin Hill. Incomplete at the Oakland 45. It bounced off his chest and... Uh, one out of bounds, second and ten. There have been no penalties in this game at all. With ten and a half minutes left in the half. Greetings and best wishes to Len Berman. He joins the CBS Radio Sports team this week. Len and Wynn Elliott will share the anchor desk for the new expanded schedule of Sports Central USA starting this Saturday, January 10th. Len Berman, hear him here. Second down and 10. Sipe is four out of 17, 34 yards, one intercepted. You can't throw the ball any better than they threw the last ball to Calvin Hill. He just dropped it. They've dropped a lot of passes. I'm amazed how well, how well Sipe has thrown the ball. He's on the run and runs out to the 45. He runs down to the 40-yard line, to the 44-yard line, and got about six yards on the carry. 
He was tackled by Dave Browning and John Matusak. The second time that Seif has scrambled out of the pocket. And he brings about a third down and uh, four play. And they talk it over. Mark the ball down on the 43. And a flag has been thrown the very first of the day on the far side of the field. The referee, Ben Dreith, is evidently going to mark off some yardage against the Oakland Raiders. Penalty on the a five-yard penalty. The first penalty of the afternoon. Defense, number 73, lined up in a neutral zone. Dave Browning second lined down. up offside. That'll make it second down and five for Cleveland at the Oakland 44. The Oakland 44-yard line. Imagine that. 10-19 left in the half, and that was the first penalty of the afternoon. No score in this game. Sipe checks the defensive alignment of the Raiders. He has Greg Pruitt and Mike Pruitt in his backfield. And he gives the ball to Mike, and Mike goes down inside the 40-yard line to the 39 for a first down. That's straight a, ahead, Hank. Yep, that's the second time they've run that straight up, straight away handoff. And here again, Pruitt makes a nice gain and picks up the necessary yardage for the first down. Made about seven on a second and five situation. So in two plays, they've averaged four, they've gained 14 yards, which is a seven-point average. Going straight ahead right at the defense and running right at the bubble. Cleveland That's the only has, way to run under these circumstances. Cleveland has three pro bowlers on their front line. Doug Deacon, Tom DeLeon, and Joe DeLamalure. The ball is at the Oakland 39, a Cleveland first down. Logan to the left, Rucker to the right. Here is a toss to the tailback, and Greg Pruitt is hit right at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Ted Hendricks penetrated and wrapped him up. And when the stork gets a hold of you, he delivers. 9.25, I didn't mean to say that. 9.25 remaining <laughs> in the half and no score. Came out, go, came out well, though, Jack. He done good. Second down and 10 for the Cleveland Browns. The size of this crowd is uh, eye-catching, Hank, to think this many people would turn out with the temperature as it is, one degree. Well, it's been a long, long time since the Cleveland Browns have been, have been in the playoffs, and they're very excited about this team, and justifiably so. Second down and 10 at the Oakland 39 for the Browns. And there is a mix-up in the backfield and uh, a scramble for the ball at the Oakland 40 as Sipe couldn't get anything underway. Just had to fall on the ball. And it's going to be third down and 10. Reggie Kinlaw was there covering him. Clock runs down to eight and a half minutes remaining in the half with no score. Field position in the kicking game is going to make uh, the difference in this contest, Jack, I'm afraid. And uh, usually in this kind of a game, the field goal has become very, very important in a kicking game. A lot of people say offense creates excitement, defense helps you win games, but uh, the kicking game wins championships. And that was so true of the Cleveland Browns back in the heyday of Lou Groza, who did such a remarkable job of kicking. Here is Sight being sacked by Hendricks, and Hendricks knocks him down near midfield. The big guy came roaring through. No one picked him up. Calvin Hill was in the backfield with Mike Pruitt. And Big Ten Hedricks found the right spot. He came roaring up the middle. And he tackled Sipe back at midfield. And it's fourth down and long. Fourth down and 20 for the Browns. who will have to punt into the wind with Johnny Evans. You know, they talk a lot about a lot of kickers. But the guy who really pioneered place kicking in professional football and football in general is Lou Groza when he played for the Cleveland Browns. He was a one who won so many games with his great kicking ability. And from that point on, everybody in professional football wanted to get a Lou Groza, and they've succeeded in doing a good job. Here's Johnny Evans with a good punt away from the receivers inside the 30 and out of bounds at the Oakland 26-yard line. He got into that ball a little bit better than they had the others. Didn't get a lot of distance, but kicked it out at the Oakland 26. It was only a 24-yard punt, but it was well-placed with 7.34 remaining in the half. With a score, Oakland nothing, Cleveland nothing. Let's take time out. Welcome to the Office of the Future. Makes corrections right here on the display screen. Sends text electronically from your from office, office to anywhere. Move whole paragraphs, whole paragraphs with, with a touch of a button. Old 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 it even adds and subtracts, and multiplies and divides. Change margins, change, page numbers, change, change, page numbers, change, change headings, change, change column, 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 column. The world of business machines. It's a confusing tangle of equipment, capabilities, and promises. But now, 
out of the confusion emerges Exxon Office Systems Company. We've innovated such advances in office technology as Quix, the intelligent typewriter, an electronic marvel with a host of automatic features that free secretaries from the monotony of routine office typing. We also make other advanced office products. But most of all, we want to help make your office more productive. Introducing Exxon Office Systems. For information, call 800-327-6666. In Florida, call 1-800-432-0800. Seven minutes, 34 seconds left in the scoreless first half in Cleveland. Hank Stram and Jack Buck with you for CBS Radio. Lindsey Nelson and Jim Kelly standing by in Atlanta to bring you the Dallas at Atlanta game here on CBS. First down, Oakland at their own 26 with Plunkett. Plunkett giving to Van Egan. He gets a yard, maybe two over the right side. The whistle blows while he's still in an upright position, and Van Egan has been able to gain very, very little today. First to meet him was Charlie Hall, and then Clarence Scott came up and finished off the play. And he got two yards, as it turned out, second and eight. You know, with the way they're playing on defense, talking about the Cleveland Browns, I would be surprised. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see Derek Ramsey come into the game. He's got much greater speed than uh, Raymond Chester, and he, I think he could do... Here's a pass, pass to Van Egan, out to the 25. He comes to the 30, to the 32, short of a first down. He is brought down, making a third and three. Bill Cower, the linebacker, was the tackler for Cleveland. And third down and three coming up for the Raiders, who just dumped it off to the running back. And they don't like to do that very much. To illustrate this point, Mark Van Egan, for the entire season, only caught 29 passes. Kenny King only caught 22. Whittington only caught 19. Jensen only caught seven. They like to get the ball downfield. And for that reason, the Browns are laying off, and they've got to throw the ball to the backs of the tight end if they're going to move the ball efficiently. Third down and three for Oakland. Plunkett's going to put it up. Sets up and throws. Uh -oh. Long intercepted by Cleveland, and it's going to be a touchdown. Racing in is Ron Bolden. He scores the first points of the game. No flags, and Cleveland leads by the score of 6 to nothing. Bolden, who intercepted earlier today, walked in front of the wide receiver along the sideline. You always hear people say what a dangerous pass pattern that is. Bob Chandler, the intended pass receiver, and Ron Bolden with an interception and a touchdown. Had no chance whatsoever. He was just waiting for the ball. It was really amazing that he threw the ball that, that far to the outside because Bolton was had had very good position. It was a simple square out pattern. Looked downfield and threw the ball outside. Bolton was right in front of Chandler. No chance whatsoever for Chandler to make a play. And uh, he threw the ball like Bolton was on his team. Got good in anticipation, goes down the sideline, and the Cleveland Browns, uh-oh, block kick. Here is the extra point drive by Cockroft, and it is no good, and the score remains six to nothing. We're trying to determine where Bolton picked it off. It was about the 40-yard line, and once he caught it, you knew that no one could get to it. This kick was blocked by Matt Millen, about whom we've been talking, and Cockroft Failed to get the extra point, and he has done that frequently this year. Previously, he was 39 out of 44. That's the sixth one that he has failed to kick. And it's a 6 nothing score with 6-10 left in the half. But, Hank, those six points and any others the Browns get may be very difficult for Oakland to recover here this afternoon. Yeah, that's very true. And especially, as I mentioned, the way they like to throw the football, they do not like to throw the ball to the backs and uh, are not a patient passing team. I think they have to change a little bit if they're going to move the ball efficiently. They've got to get the ball, as I mentioned several times, to the tight end and to the backs more often if they're going to be successful moving the football here this afternoon. That was the third turnover charged against the Oakland Raiders, two of them interceptions, the other a fumble after a sack of the quarterback Plunkett, and Cleveland has broken the scoring ice. And that phrase is uh, apropos here this afternoon on the frozen field at Cleveland. 6-10 remaining in the half. And the Browns are on top. As Hank Strand mentioned, it's been a long time for the Cleveland Browns since they have been in the playoffs. It's the first time since 1972. The last divisional title they won was 1971, and they lost to Green Bay. They've had a little luck against Oakland. Uh, they are 1-6 against the Raiders. But the Browns have played well here at home this year. They have a record of 6-2, and, and they lead 
six to nothing. One thing about the Oakland Raiders, the personality of this team has always been one when they, they play much, much better when they're playing under adversity than they do when they uh, things are even. Well, they've got it now. Here's the kickoff, and it is short. Taken by Whittington on the 18, running right to the 20, out to the 25, to the 30. He breaks the tackle and goes down at the 36-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. Downfield for Cleveland with Ricky Feature with his second downfield tackle of the afternoon. An 18-yard return by Arthur Whittington. Now Plunkett is 3 out of 12, 21 yards, 2 intercepted. Oakland has picked up one first down for the entire afternoon. So the kickoff went to the Oakland Raider, 36. And the crowd here is hollering defense. And you'd be surprised at the number of people who are here despite the elements. Plunkett intercepted the last time, fakes the draw play, and is back to throw. Ample all the time. time. Now he runs out of the pocket. He throws on the run, and it's incomplete. He tried to get it out to Cliff Branch, and there was running room. Then he threw into heavy coverage by Dick Ambrose, the Browns linebacker. 5.50 left in the half. And the score is the Cleveland Browns 6, and the Oakland Raiders nothing. Lindsey Nelson will be along with Jim Kelly for the play-by-play -play story of the Dallas and Atlanta game this afternoon. At halftime here, Brent Musburger. Branch to the left. Bob Chandler to the right. Second and ten open. And Plunkett straight back to throw. Three-man rush. No pressure by Cleveland. The throw to the sideline. And Chandler was able to haul it in for a first down at the Cleveland 49. Kept his feet in bounds. Caught the ball. Stayed on the deck and then fell out of bounds. And Clarence Scott was trying to cover it. Some throw by Plunkett and a dandy catch by Bob Chandler. Chandler really, really made a super catch. Anytime that you have to reach that high for a ball that close to the sideline when it's up and away and you make the catch with your hands like he did, really a sensational catch under these circumstances. He looked like a statue stretched out to haul in that 16-yard pass for a first down. Plunkett straight back to throw again. No pressure. Look at the back. Wings it out wide open to Kenny King. He is to the 46-yard line, 45 of Cleveland and out of bounds, and he picked up only four yards. Clay Matthews, the linebacker, got to him. That's what they have to do more of because the Cleveland Brown defense does not respect and worry about the short receivers because they very rarely throw to those people. They're going to have to throw to them be, to get the linebackers to come up and the defensive backs to be more conscious and then be able to get the ball deeper downfield. You can throw a lot of passes successfully against Cleveland. Yes, 63% of the time uh, the opposition has uh, been successful throwing a football. Second down and six, and Plunkett will put it up. No pressure. He steps up and throws, and it's caught inside the 40 for a first down. Then the ball came loose, and the call is... The ball was dead, dead Jack. at the Cleveland 39, very close to a first down. Mark Van Egan caught it. The play was whistled dead. He coughed it up, and they do not give him enough forward progress for a first down. It's going to make it third and one. You know, because Plunkett looks downfield, is so involved in trying to get the ball downfield that he's a little late and a little slow getting rid of the ball and getting it to the backs when they are open. That time, Van Egan was open for a long time before he came back to him and got the ball to him. Derek Ramsey, the other tight end, checks in. They take out the wide receivers. And uh, Derek Jensen is into their backfield. Third down and a yard for the Raiders from the Cleveland 40. Van Egan and Jensen in the backfield. And it is given to Van Egan and a keep by Plunkett. And what a good job he did. Van Egan slipped and fell. Couldn't get the ball, and Plunkett held onto the ball and dived down to the Cleveland 38 for a first down. One thing you know and you learn as a quarterback, anytime you don't make the exchange to the fullback or the halfback into the designated hole, the thing that you must remember, just go into the hole yourself because that's where everybody is blocking. Have the presence to go into the hole. That's exactly what he did, and for that reason, he was able to make the first down. At the Cleveland 38 with 4.09 remaining in the first half, Cleveland leading 6-0. They ought to throw the ball here on first and 10. And Plunkett delays the ball instead to Kenny King, trying to get outside to the 35. He's down to the 30-yard line, and he picked up about seven yards on the carry over to the right side. Tackled by Bill Cower, the linebacker, and the Raiders have a drive going. Well, the draw play was in the, in the passing family, which was a good call because uh, uh, they threw the ball a little bit on first and 10. The defense was anticipating perhaps that they were going to throw the ball, ran a draw play, did a good job of acting, 
and King did a good job of running, picking up seven yards on the play. And it is second down and three as a result of the Cleveland 31 with three and a half left in the half. Plug it on second down to Kenny King. Pops it up the middle. Tackle at the 29. It'll be third down and about a yard and a half. Lyle Alzado made a resounding tackle. It's a tough play to run on a short yardage situation again because the left halfback has to run from the left halfback position all the way over to the right side. By the time he gets there, usually he closes in on it. And again, they put in the extra big back, Derek Jensen, and the other tight end, Derek Ramsey, for the Oakland Raiders. At the Cleveland uh, 29, third down and one. 250 left in the first half. Cleveland leading six to nothing. Harris, Bradley, and Alzado up front for Cleveland. You can look for Van Egan to carry the ball. They show motion by Jensen. The give to Van Egan gets a first down and rolls down to the Cleveland 25, and the Raiders will go from there. Clinton Burrell finished off the play defensively, and the Raiders, who took the ball at their own 36-yard line, have moved to the Cleveland 25. And another first down. They went a long time before they got any first downs. Now they're piling them up and putting them together. 2.15 left in the half. Each team has three timeouts remaining. Out come the Raiders. They have the wind at their back here in the second quarter. Chandler and Branch go to the right side. It's King and Van Egan in their backfield. On first down, Plunkett's going to pass. No pressure. Throws and Whoa. complete. He threw in front of the Cleveland defensive player, Clinton Burrell. And a rather poor pass by Plunkett, and it takes us to the two-minute warning. Had it been a good pass, it would have been another interception, Jack. Had no chance whatsoever to get the ball to the receiver that time. We have the automatic timeout with 1.57 remaining in the half. The ball is on the Cleveland 25, second and 10 Oakland, a timeout on the field with a score. Cleveland 6, the Oakland Raiders nothing. Shine on, Rusty Jones, shine on. Hi, I'm Rusty Jones. Rusty, could you make my new car shine like that one? It's like looking at a mirror. Sure. All it takes is my exterior gloss treatment. Then I'll stay with you day and night, winter and summer, without even a coffee break. To keep your new car shining on for as long as you own it. Good, because I plan to keep it for a long, long time. That's not all. At trade-in time, your car will be worth more. Because it'll still be bright and shiny. That's what makes me the one new car option that actually appreciates in value. Rusty, I'm sold. But where do I find you? Right at your new car dealer. Just ask for me, Rusty Jones Car Saver System. Hey, Rusty. Yeah. Shine on. Shine on. Rusty Jones, shine on. Look for new car dealers that offer Rusty Jones Car Saver System. It's a sure sign they care. Coming up at halftime, Brent Musburger will have a recap of yesterday's playoff action in the NFL, along with a preview of the Atlanta-Dallas game, which will be heard just about the time this contest is concluded. Second down and 10 for the Raiders. 1.57 left in the half. They trail 6-0, and they're at the Cleveland 25-yard line. Plunkett yeah, on a running play, and uh, it's going to be stopped for a loss. As Kenny King, on a delay, was tackled back at the 28-yard line. Kenny King was dropped by Clay Matthews, the linebacker, and that was a three-yard loss, third and 13, coming up for the Raiders at the Cleveland 28 now. So the incompleted pass and the loss of three, and this Oakland drive is slowed considerably. 125 left in the half. Oakland has two first downs out of ten third down tries. Not very effective. Here is motion by the running back, King. And on third and long, third and 13, plunk it back to throw, looks and throws long downfield, wide open, Chester caught it inside the five, held the ball, and it'll be first and goal. First and goal for the Oakland Raiders at the Cleveland two-yard line. Hank Stram has been talking about the fact that the tight end should be the most effective Receiver, He caught it with Tom Darden alongside a big third down pass play. It was third and 13, and he hit Chester at the Cleveland 2. And 103 remaining in the first half, and Oakland has called timeout. 
Raymond Chester hauled it in. And he went to the Cleveland two-yard line. And it is first and goal to go for the Oakland Raiders. Folks, the best players in collegiate football square off in the Senior Bowl on Saturday, January 17th. There's bound to be plenty of excitement. The top collegiate talent goes head-to-head. It's the Senior Bowl, Saturday, Mobile, Alabama, January 17th on CBS Radio with Jim Kelly and Bill Wilkerson. Hear it here. Hank, he picked down the tight end again, and he was wide open down the middle. Well, he's the guy they got to do business with, and I'm surprised they waited so long to throw the ball to him. Plunkett is 7 out of 18, 72 yards. He's had a couple intercepted. 103 remaining in the half, and Oakland has two timeouts left. You know, one thing about Plunkett, he is not a percentage kind of a passer. They don't worry about percentage. They just worry about throwing the ball downfield, making big plays. They're a big play passing offensive team, and uh, they're going to win or lose on how well they execute that basic philosophy. It is Harris, Bradley, Cruz, and Alzado up front for the Browns. They're going to run right. Trying to stop this touchdown thrust of the Oakland Raiders. Motion by Jensen. Here's the give to Van Ingen. Fumble. He fumbles the ball. He got it. got it back at the line of scrimmage at the two-yard line. Again, Van Egan slipped with the snap of the ball, then got it, fumbled it, and got it back again right at the two. You know, funny thing that time, Jack, they had a wing back on the right side. They had a distinct advantage. They should have run to the right. Instead, they put a man in motion, ran to the left. Too many folks there made a bad exchange and almost lost possession. But the, the place to run from that formation is to the right. Clock is running. It's down to 30 seconds remaining in the half. And it's second and goal from the two. Plunkett back to throw. He's rushed. He throws into the end zone incomplete. He threw it away when he looked at the blitz. And he tried to get it out to his tight end, Derek Ramsey. Covered by Don Good, the linebacker. And Noah's Good coming in after Plunkett, really putting pressure on. And it's third and goal from the two with 22 seconds remaining in the half. And they'd like to make Oakland settle for a field goal try. And despite the fact the clock was stopped on the incompleted pass, Oakland uses another timeout to talk it over. 22 seconds remaining in the half. So first and goal, then no gain on the running play, and then incomplete. You can't automatically assume when it's first and goal that anybody's going to get a touchdown, Hank. No, that's right. You you know, you got 22 big people in a very restricted area here, and it's uh, you don't have a lot of room to work. But again, I, as I mentioned earlier, on the first and 10 situation, they had a wing back on the right side. They had the backs lined up uh, on the right side with a full back at home, the half back on the right side too. They had a distinct advantage. They would have been able to make yardage going to the right. Had they executed the play, they didn't do that, however. They ran to the left instead and uh, blew the opportunity to get points on that last series. How do you think they'll try to get in on this one, Hank, on third down and two, third well, goal from the two? Well, they're on the two-yard line. They, they've got to make a decision. They've got two, down, two yards and two downs to make two yards. They've only rushed for 27 on 17 tries. Yes, and or they got to try to throw the ball here and then settle for the field goal, I guess. The score is 6 to nothing in favor of Cleveland on the interception by Bolton with 6-10 left in the half. Now, here they are in that same formation again with a wing back on the right side. And that's Todd Christensen. Todd Christensen. Third and goal from the two. Plunkett takes the ball to Van Egan. Touchdown. He gets over over the right side for the touchdown to tie the score at 6-6 with 18 seconds remaining in the half. Van Egan gets the touchdown for the Oakland Raiders, his sixth of the year. Well, they went to the right spot. They had a distinct advantage there. They took advantage of it. Good surge on the right side with Mickey Marvin. Henry Lawrence, the tight end Raymond Chester, and the wing back Todd Christensen. They definitely had an advantage. They took advantage of it. Go in and get six points, and now the extra point is, looms very, very large. It will be tried by Chris Barr. He kicked 41 out of 44 extra point tries during the regular season. Chandler will hold the ball. Barr is a soccer-style kicker. The ball is put down. He kicks it, and Oakland goes on top. 7-6 with 18 seconds remaining in the first half. Well, Oakland really earned that one. They took the kickoff at their 36-yard line. They passed to Chandler at the Cleveland 49. They passed to King to the 45-yard line. A pass to Van Egan down to the 40. Plunkett ran to the 38. The draw play went to the 31. Van Egan ran down to the Cleveland 25 for a first down. 
And then a big third down and 13 pass to Raymond Chester. Set up the first and goal from the two. And on third and goal, Van Egan went over from two yards to tie the game. And Chris Barr has put the Oakland Raiders on top with 18 seconds remaining in the half. They earned theirs a good deal more than the Cleveland Browns did. The Browns got the touchdown on the interception by Ron Bolton with 6'10 left in the half. And he ran 40 yards for the score, but then the extra point attempt by Cockroft was blocked. Cockroft previously had missed two field goal tries. And so the Oakland Raiders have a one-point advantage here with the half about to come to a close. Chris yep. Barr will kick it off to Charles White, who is deep along with Dino Hall. Here is the kick by Barr, and it's a line drive sort of kick, and it is taken. On the 13-yard line by Dino Hall, he's out to the 30 and tripped up and goes down at the 35-yard line. With regard to penalties in the first half, there has been only one. That's against the Oakland Raiders for offside. The Browns will have 14 seconds to do something with the ball. That was a 22-yard return by Dino Hall on the short kick by Chris Barr. Oakland's a very unusual team. As I mentioned it right before that last drive, you know, they play better when things really get tough. They really screw those hats on and come after you and do a good job. They have great concentration, good discipline. They're tough and rugged. And uh, being behind doesn't bother them very much because they've got a poise. Cleveland has three timeouts remaining, but that's academic. There are only 14 seconds left in the half. Sipes back to throw. Steps up in the pocket, throws to the sideline. It's caught, and Rucker goes out of bounds at the Oakland 48-yard uh, line with eight seconds remaining in the half. And Oakland that time was satisfied to just rush two people. The, the uh, man on the nose of the center that time just mirrored the quarterback. It looked like he was going to take care of him in the event that he got out of the pocket. That's Reggie Kenlaw. He stayed on the line of scrimmage. Eight people back, three guys rushing. Or actually, two guys rushing with the nose man playing very soft. Eight seconds left in the half. That was a 17-yard gain, and Sipe wants to pass again. Steps up and throws it long downfield for Logan, and it is intercepted by Oakland back at the five-yard line, and time has expired. Come that away with the ball was Lester Hayes. Brother, he just doesn't miss, and that is his second in this game. That is his 17th interception of the year. Boy, and he sucked that right out of the air, didn't he? He never misses. There's the gun sounding the end of the first half with a score. The Oakland Raiders 7 and the Cleveland Browns 6. Have newspaper headlines of soaring interest rates and tight credit made you put off buying that new car or truck you need today? Well, GMAC has the answer. Your GM dealer who uses GMAC not only has money available, but at rates that make good sense. In fact, rates today haven't changed that much from rates three or four years ago when you bought your last car. Check out all the models at your Chevy, Pontiac, Olds, Buick, Cadillac, or GMC truck dealer. Your GM dealer has the GMAC financing you need today. They sold 80,000 tickets, 80,385. The in-house attendance uh, has to be estimated at this point, probably 70,000. And Oakland will kick off at the beginning of the third quarter. They will be kicking into the wind. Why is that, Hank? They're not only kicking off, but they're kicking into the wind. They have their choice of direction. They want the wind in the fourth quarter. Very obviously, that's what, that's what the decision was. But that's rather treacherous. Well, I guess... Well, they did at the beginning of the game. They had, uh, you know, they, they uh, received the kickoff and uh, didn't succeed in making any yardage, had to punt, but they were kicking and playing into the wind in the first quarter, and they'll be lucky to have it in the fourth. Here's Chris Barr about to kick off. Charles White goes deep along with Dino Hall. Keith Wright has been injured for the Cleveland Browns. The kick is high and not too deep. And it is taken by White on the 14. He's to the 20, to the 25, to the 30, out to the 35 and the 39. The former USC star gives the Cleveland Browns quite a surge here at the outset of the second half with a 26-yard kickoff return. The Browns trailing by a point. Go to work. Now, Cleveland uh, has done a good job of throwing the football. Sipe, I think, has been very accurate under the circumstances. They just haven't caught the passes that were thrown to them. But that's one thing that they have to continue to do, I think, to get back into this football game. 
they have to do what they do best, and that is throw the football. They'll mark the ball down at the Cleveland 40-yard line. The Browns trailing 7-6. to six. Sight back to throw on first down. He has a lot of time and throws, and Ozzie Newsom uh, has it, uh, they call it complete or incomplete. The official is waiting for help. They call that ball complete at the 49-yard line of the Oakland Raiders, who protest that the ball had been dropped. And it was caught, and it is a first down for the Browns on a diving catch by Newsom with Davis and Millen covering. I guarantee you, I throw that ball every down, run some draws, run some screens, or throw the ball, run a couple of handoffs, but I pump it up and keep throwing it because they've got people open. They just have to do a better job of catching the football, and they did on their very first play. At the Oakland 49-yard line, Sipe uh, stays on the ground and gives the ball to Mike Pruitt over the right side, and he has to work very hard to get yardage down to the 46. He picked up two or three yards, hit by Dave Browning, the defensive end, and Reggie Kinlaw, who's playing the nose, and a three-yard gain, second down and seven. That was a straight-ahead play, the handoff we were talking about a little while ago. They used a reverse pivot, however, on that, meaning the quarterback, instead of directly handing off to the back, reverse pivoted turned his back to him and then came back around and gave him the football. I think in this in conditions like they are, that's a dangerous maneuver. It'd be much better off to just go down the line, hand the ball off to the back, and let him get the most out of, out of the plays he possibly can. Oakland goes into four down linemen now to try to get a little more pressure on Brian Seip. Here's Seip giving to Calvin Hill, running right as a wall of blockers goes to the 40 to the 35. He is down to the 30-yard line and out of bounds at the Oakland 28. With the first down, the veteran, who is now 34 years old, Calvin Hill, ran down to the 28-yard line of Oakland for a first down. Well, the great thing about Calvin Hill, you know, he's at a stage where he's got adequate speed, but he was able, he's got very good intelligence. He was able to follow the blockers extremely well, set a good pace, took advantage of the blocks and scampered down the sideline, made a big gain and a first down for the Cleveland Browns. That offensive line of De Leon, Shepard, Delamalur, Risen, and Deacon really had a wall of blockers out in front of Calvin Hill. They're now at the Oakland 28 and a first down. They got out of that four-man line in a hurry. They're back to the three-man front. Here's Sight three back man to rush. throw. And now he is going to run, and he is hitting down at the 25. He got about three yards on the play. Kinlaw, number 62, the middle guard, the man out of the center, he is not rushing on passing situations. He's mirroring the quarterback. And if the quarterback goes out of the pocket, he follows him and makes the play. And a face mask violation is called against the Oakland Raiders. The John Matisak latched down to the birdcage in front of the face of Brian Seif. Personal, Personal foul, foul face mask, the ball to the 20 of Oakland and a first down for Cleveland. First down. and wonder, Hank, when a quarterback runs with the ball and they see the face mask violation if it's not really intentional. Now, I'm not laying it on Matusak, but a lot of players don't pass up an opportunity to get at their quarterback. Well, they, yeah, that's that's true on some occasions, although, you know, when you're trying to make a tackle, you grab anything you possibly can, and sometimes you wind up with that face mask deep downfield. Right back to throw, hits it at the 15-yard line to Ozzie Newsom, who struggles to the 14. And he got six yards on that quick pass play from Seip to the tight end, Ozzie Newsom. And Reggie Rucker ran a streak down the far sideline and uh, was behind Lester Hayes that time, but he threw the ball to Newsom, and they moved the ball again on a nice game. And the safety man, the strong safety, Mike Davis, made the tackle. The ball is now down at the Oakland 14. And I think we'll see more throwing to the tight end on both teams not only Oakland, but also Cleveland in the second half because Newsom, uh, they feel, I think, can beat Mike Davis on individual patterns. Pruitt and Hiller in the backfield, second down and four. And the running play to Pruitt gets only a yard, and he spins and drives for that yard. He might have gotten to, and it's going to be third down and two yards for the Cleveland Browns. There again, that handoff straight ahead with a reverse pivot. So Pruitt took it down to the open 12. Third down and two. Oakland can be tough up front. Well, they are very tough up front. Uh, they're two, especially against the run. They're second in the conference against the rush, 10 against the pass, six totally in defense. It is still Pruitt and Calvin Hill and third down and three. The outside receivers have a bump and run situations. I wouldn't be surprised to see them go on top 
Here's Sykes Here he on the throw. Oh, he rushes, he throws into the end zone and incomplete. Incomplete is the call. He tried to get it to Dave Logan in the end zone. He was greatly covered by Dwayne Osteen. Osteen is tough to beat, and it's fourth down, and the Browns will try to go on top with a field goal try. I was surprised that he tried to do it that way, to get up on top that way. He faked a play-action pass and then tried to throw the ball up on top. The timing of the play was very, very bad, and usually is. You have to drop back into the pocket and throw the ball on top outside to make that kind of a play succeed. Cockcroft has missed from 46 yards and 30 yards, and he'll try another 30-yard field goal. Cleveland trailing 7-6. to six. The snap from center by Sullivan is good. They get it down, and Cockcroft kicks it, and the Browns go on top by the score of 9-7. to seven. They took the opening kickoff at their 40-yard line, ended up with a 30-yard field goal, and they have regained the lead with 11-29 remaining in the third quarter. With the score, the Cleveland Browns 9 and the Oakland Raiders 7. Let's take time out. Bush, St. Louis. Thanks, Stram. We should report the fact that on that Cleveland drive, the first down pass to Ozzie Newsom, the Oakland Raiders insist that the ball hit the ground. The replay on television kind of looked that way. We may hear more about that when this game is over. Yeah, we couldn't see it from here because uh, we, we have, you know, they had our back, uh, he had his back to us. It looked like it was a very questionable catch. It really did from here. Keith Moody is deep along with Arthur Whittington. And they're standing at their 15, not expecting Cockroft to kick it very deep. And it's a line drive kick, and it bounces on the 20, taken by Whittington on the 15. He's back to the 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. And he comes out to the Oakland 40-yard line. Tackle downfield by Cleveland's uh, John Mooring, the linebacker. A 25-yard return. These kickers just aren't able to get the ball deep with the temperature as it is, two degrees above zero here in Cleveland. Oakland starts at their own 40. The ice on the ball is keeping it from getting okay. too high. The ball at the Oakland 40-yard line, and the Raiders trailing by the score of 9-7. to 11-19 left in the third quarter. Bob Chandler's to the right, Cliff Branch to the left. King is on a wing. Van Egan, the running back, carries the ball and pops out for about three over the left side. That's the first time they used a double wing formation and talking about Oakland. That time they had... Kenny King on the wing, wing meaning that he sets in a position outside of the offensive tackle, about a yard wide and a yard off the line of scrimmage to control that linebacker on that side. They run a straight ahead play, and uh, Van Egan picks up about four yards on the play. Injured now and leaving is the left guard, uh, Gene Upshaw. He's replaced by Bruce Davis at the left guard position. Van Egan got three and a half. We'll call it three and second and seven from the Oakland 43. Branch left, Chandler right, the tight end, Raymond Chester on the right side. Dalby, the center, snaps the ball to Plunkett on a delay to Van Egan, slanting left, hit at the 45, and down he goes. And it is going to be a third down play, third and five for the Raiders. Good coverage by the Browns, led by Clay Matthews, the linebacker, and R.L. Jackson, who plays the inside. Look at that middle. And uh, operating into the wind, Plunkett is back to throw. No pressure, throws, and it is incomplete and almost intercepted. Walking in front of the ball was Clarence Scott. He made a diving drive for the pickoff. The pass intended for Raymond Chester, the tight end. Punting time for the Raiders, who trail by a couple of points. They sent Chester right out into the coverage. Had he gone in the middle area, they'd have been much, much better off and he had, would have had more of an opportunity to make a play and make a catch. Guy has punted five times. This will be number six. He has averaged 40 and one-half yards per punt. 
Back to get it is Dino Hall. The sun is shining here, and Hall may have a little problem with it. He's standing inside his 20. We wait for the snap from center by Todd Christensen. And there's the kick by Ray Guy. He got it up high, and Dino Hall waits for it. Takes it on the 18, running left. Gets oh, to the 20, to the 25, 30, 35-yard line. And out of bounds, he goes at the 36. Dino Hall with a fine punt return. His average previously had been 6.8. But he got that one downfield to the Cleveland 36. And uh, Dave Pear, along with Joe Campbell, Campbell primarily was the Oakland tackler after the 18-yard punt return. Oakland's doing a very poor job on covers. They're too, mu they're too bunched together and not staying in their lanes like they should. And for that reason, there was a lot of room on the outside. The out-containment man didn't do a good job of forcing to play inside. Cleveland's at their own 36, a timeout on the field with a score, the Browns 7 and Oakland 7. You probably know the feeling. You see a really choice industrial property when driving or from above when landing at O'Hare, and your mind suddenly spins off in that old, if only my firm were located here, daydream. Well, don't stop there. Take it one step further and let Clefstat Engineering Company, Incorporated, help you pin your fantasy down to brick-and-mortar reality. The Clefstat organization owns or manages many daydream-inspiring lease properties or will build a suit on agreeable lease or leaseback terms. Clefstad is one of the Chicago area's foremost single responsibility industrial builders. From start to finish, every trade, skill, and service that goes into a Clefstad building is furnished by or supervised by Clefstad crews or supervisory personnel. You deal with one firm, Clefstad. Call Jim Connor or Stan Clefstad at 777-7300. Put your firm in a dream of a Clefstad construction. Cleveland leading 9-7. to seven. I gave the wrong score just before the commercial. They're at their own 36. A first down pass coming up. Sipe looks and throws long to the sideline. Incomplete. Incomplete to the sideline. Dwayne Osteen defensively for Oakland is all over the place. And as he tried to get the ball out to Reggie Rucker, he had to throw it up and away and incomplete. It'll be second and 10 for Cleveland with 9.53 remaining in the third quarter. I think they can throw the ball to Ozzie Newsom a little bit more than they have so far, Jack. It looks like, you know, they've got a slot formation to the right with Logan and Rucker on the outside. Burgess Owen is playing way deep in the middle. And Mike Davis is playing the tight end man for man. And I think they can do some work on Davis with Newsom on a one-on-one -on -one situation. The Pruitts are in there, Greg and Mike. They're not related, by the way. It's second down and 10 for the Browns from their 36. Sight back to throw. And he throws long downfield, and it is caught by Pruitt at the 40 of Oakland for a first down to the 39. It was a dandy catch by Greg Pruitt out of Oklahoma, and some throw by Seif. That time they had Logan split to the left side. He ran down about 12 yards and across the middle to occupy the cornerback and also the safety. They put a Pruitt on a linebacker, number 53, Martin. He got behind them. The ball was thrown perfectly, and uh, they get a big play on a pattern, a flood pattern to the weak side, which means it's thrown away from the tight end side. Sipe, 7 out of 23, 90 yards, no touchdowns, two intercepted. The ball is now at the Oakland 39-yard line. And a first down for Cleveland. And the fake is to the running back, and here is Sipe chased out of the pocket, throws it out here, and it is caught by Calvin Hill, and he is tackled right at the line of scrimmage. Alvin Hill was chased and dropped by Ted Hendricks, the linebacker, and others second down and 10. Browns leading by the score of 9-7. to seven. They trail at halftime 7-6. They got the field goal of 30 yards by Don Cockroft, who's one out of three in that department today, to go on top again. Eight thirty remaining in the third quarter. They ran a play-action pass the last time with express purpose, so I think of trying to hit... Newsom on a crossing pattern, but it was covered well, and he dumped the ball on the outside to Calvin Hill. Wide receiver is Logan to the left. He hasn't been able to catch many. Rucker is to the right. Ought to be able sight back to throw. Steps up and throws over the middle, and it is caught at the 25 for a first down for Cleveland. A first down for Cleveland on a pass that was drilled to Dave Logan. He was dropped at the 24, and it's a first down. It was a good, good catch by Logan. It was a little bit behind. Had to reach back a little bit, but made the catch. The ball was on the money, 
and a beautiful uh, executed play on the part of the Cleveland Browns. Snipe really got up on top on that throw and drilled it to Logan, who caught his first pass of the afternoon. The line of scrimmage is now the Raider 24-yard line. Well, they got a bump and run on the outside receivers, which means it would be a good chance for them to throw something up on top. Snipe goes there he up goes. on top into the end zone, incomplete, and no flags. No flags. Reggie Rucker was looking for the yellow. He was covered by Lester Hayes. There was some bumping as they went downfield inside the Oakland 10. But no flag was forthcoming. There have been only two penalties in this game, both against Oakland, one offside and one face mask. Second down and 10 at the Oakland 24-yard line. Cleveland leading 9-7, 7.26 remaining in the third quarter. Now they come in with five defensive backs. Otis McKinney is the fifth back, number 23, for the Oakland Raiders. Going out is uh, Mike Pruitt. Calvin Hill is joined by Greg Pruitt, who caught a big pass a moment ago. Split backs and sight back to throw. Four-man rush. Blitz is on. The pass is caught at the 20-yard line. The hit made at the 19. By, uh, as Greg Pruitt hauled it in, he was dropped by the safety man, Mike Davis. A substantial game for Cleveland. The ball is at the... 18-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. And third down coming up, third down and uh, five for the Browns. The ball of the Oakland 18. They had a one-on-one -on -one situation with uh, Craig Brew at that time on Mike Davis, number 36. Cleveland has not been very successful on third down tries, and it's third and five. Newsom's got a great chance. Newsom, the tight end, would be... Here's Seip about to be sacked. He throws it incomplete, and he threw it at the feet of his uh, guard, his tackle, Cody Risen. And I thought we could have seen a flag there for intentional crowning, but Cleveland got away with it. Cleveland got away with it. There was no receiver in the area. And it is fourth down, and Cockroft will attempt... Another field goal. Matuzak did a good job of rushing on Risen, the offensive tackle, number 63. Got good penetration and made the, made him throw the ball like he did. And I was like you, Jack. I thought maybe they might have called it for intentional grounding. The ball will be kicked from 36 yards away. Cockroft is one out of three. The snap from center. And is bobbled. And here is McDonald running. And he is knocked down at the 29-yard line. Paul McDonald got a bad snap from center, tried to run with the ball, and his feet knocked out from under him. As Jerry Sullivan snapped the ball poorly, McDonald, the quarterback, picked it up and tried to do something with it. But he was decked at the open 29, and the Raiders take over with exactly six and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. There's a timeout on the field with a score. The Cleveland Browns, nine, and the Oakland Raiders, seven. Water, one of nature's greatest blessings. But it causes big problems when it gets into your car's fuel system. That's why it's important to use heat fuel system dryer and antifreeze. Heat takes the water out, ensures quick, trouble-free starts, and smoother engine performance. So avoid those aggravating problems in getting your car started. The coughs, the sputter, the stalling. Just add heat to your gas tank. That's all you need to eliminate fuel system freeze-up. Buy a supply of heat fuel system dryer and antifreeze today. A small investment for big protection and driver's peace of mind. Heat. H-E-E-T. Heat fuel system dryer and antifreeze. Just look for the bright yellow plastic bottle with a long neck. It's sold everywhere. Don't stall. Buy heat. One form or another has missed three or four field goal tries. The one they made put them on top here in the third quarter, nine to seven. Six and a half minutes remaining in this third period. And the Oakland Raiders have the ball at their own 29-yard line. The kicking game is really killing the Browns. Even though they're ahead, it could be very costly as this game wears on. Plunkett has King and Van Egan in the backfield. Raymond Chester, the tight end on the right side. Plunkett back to throw. He throws and it is caught. Out beyond the 30-yard line, out to the 33 by Cliff Branch. Branch coming back inside, caught the ball for a gain of about four yards on the play. Branch ran a delay pattern that time. He ran downfield like he was going to run deep and then came underneath. Uh, the ball was thrown right on the money, made the catch, 
and uh, but they only pick up four yards on the play. Clinton Burrell made the tackle, and when you are chasing uh, Branch, you had better tackle him when you get a chance. That was his first catch of the day. Second down and six for Oakland at their own 33. On second down, plunk it on the ground to Kenny King, and he is tackled as he gets to the 35. It's going to be third down and four for Oakland. He ran into Harris and Alzado, the defensive ends. Kenny King is good for a couple of yards. They continue to run the lead plays, meaning that the fullback will lead the halfback into the hole. Here again, it's a long way to run on this treacherous turf, and especially so the way the Cleveland Browns are reacting to what they see offensive viewpoint. Third and four for Oakland. They send Chandler to the right. And they split Cliff Branch to the left. Chester the tight end on the right side. Plug it back to throw. No pressure. Now he throws and it is caught out at the 40 and the tackle made on Chester. Let's see what kind of forward progress they give him at the 39. Very, very close to a first down and now a penalty flag has been thrown and a holding call against the Oakland Raiders. The Raiders will be assessed 10 yards. And that will make it third down and 14. You know, Chester really did a poor job of running that pattern. He should have gotten a little bit more distance downfield. He almost did not make the necessary yardy for the first down. It doesn't make any difference, really. Offensive holding, number 63. Gene Upshaw. Upshaw was injured earlier. He's back in there now just in time to hold somebody. Yep. Three penalties against Oakland, totaling 20 yards. 5.03 left in the third quarter. Oakland third down and 14 at their 25. Crowd here, hollering defense. Cleveland showing a three-man rush. And the middle area is very open if he can get the ball inside. Four-man rush, plug it back to throw, steps up, throws over the sideline, incomplete. He overthrew Chandler, the wide receiver. And it is fourth down and punting time for Ray Guy, Ron Bolton, covering for Cleveland. Picked the wrong guy to throw through to that time, Jack. The middle was open. Chester was open in the middle. He looked outside with the express purpose of trying to get the ball to Chandler. Never looked anyplace else and threw it way over the top and goes incomplete. We have 4.56 remaining in the third quarter. Keith Wright suffered a concussion. He will not be back in the game. And Dino Hall waits at his 35 for the Ray Guy punt. Todd Christensen will snap it. And there is the snap. Ray Guy gets into it. A line drive kick. Dino Hall will return it. He handles it at the 39. Runs right to the 40. Gets to the 45 to midfield. Down to the 45. Unloads on Ray Guy, the tackler. And he is out of bounds at the 43. That guy, by the way, is some athlete. He's not just a kicker. 4.45 remaining in the third quarter. Dino Hall returned the ball to the Oakland 44, and the Browns will go from there after a 36-yard punt and an 18-yard return. With a score, Cleveland 9 and Oakland 7. Let's take time out. When you visit your Buick dealer, you won't have any trouble finding the aerodynamically styled 1981 Regal. It'll be the one with a crowd around it, which could make seeing the new Regal a little difficult. But do persevere and work your way through the elbows. Because we'd hate for you to leave without seeing how nicely it turned out. The 1981 Regal. If you like what you see, join the crowd. Flying Army, and we train thousands of aviation specialists every year. See your Army recruiter today. Paid for by the U.S. Army. Last time the Cleveland Browns had the ball, they moved down for a 36 yard field goal try. A bad snap from center. Prevented the field goal, and now the Browns have it at the Oakland 44. The Browns also have the lead by the score of 9-7. to 7. 4.45 remaining in the third quarter as we try to determine which of these two, Oakland or Cleveland, will move on to the game at San Diego next Sunday. Logan comes to the left, and Reggie Rucker flanks to the right side. It is Calvin Hill and Mike Pruitt in the backfield for Brian Seip. Seip back to throw. 
Three-man rush for Oakland. Pass over the middle. Caught by Logan at the 25. He's down to the 23 for a Cleveland first down. Logan came from the left side across the middle, and Sight nailed him. So did Burgess Owens on the tackle. Yeah, that time he ran an inside course, and the last time they ran that pattern, they threw the ball to Greg Pruitt, who was down into the corner. That time it was um, number 35, Calvin Hill, who ran the same course, but they hit the inside man that time instead of the back, who was running a, a, a corner route on the play. And a 21-yard pickup on the pass to Dave Logan. First down at the Oakland 23. Ricky Feature checks in as a wide receiver now. For Cleveland, sight back to throw on first down. No pressure at all. Now he's chased out of the pocket. He throws on the run incomplete and smartly threw it away in front of the receiver, Mike Pruitt. So Sipe had a lot of time, but nothing opened up for him. Finally, Dave Browning chased him out of the pocket along with Rod Martin. But he was really smart when he unloaded the ball. Yes, he was. And Matuzak was there, too, putting pressure from the outside. John Matuzak, the defensive left end, number 72. Oh, I wouldn't be afraid of him. Oh, no, he's like, he's only 6'8", <laughs> 280. Second down and 10 for the Browns, who lead 9-7 to seven in the third quarter with 3.52 remaining in the period. Logan comes to the left. Wide receiver to the right is Reggie Rucker. They got bump and run again on the outside receivers. He ought to go right back into the pocket and attack the outside people and try to get the ball upfield. Here's the blitz. He's got Riker. Sets and throws into heavy traffic incomplete inside the 10-yard line. And a flag goes down. And another flag goes down inside the 10-yard line. And we'll see what the call is. He tried to get the ball to Dave Logan. Defenders all over the area. Logan gets up uh, holding his wrist. Dwayne Osteen was in the middle of the play, and he may be called. We'll have to wait and see what kind of interference, if that's what it was, and against whom. The referee is Ben Dreith. He talks it over. It looks like it's against Oakland. Talks it over with a side judge. Interference against Oakland. And offside against Oakland. That's where the two flags were. They'll take the interference call, an automatic first down at the Oakland nine-yard line. You know, Reggie Rucker that time ran right by Lester Hayes. He was open, going right down the seam. Sight did not see him. Also, defense passed interference, accepted, first down. An interference call against Oakland. And a first down and goal for Cleveland at the nine-yard line. Cleveland already leading 9-7. to 3.46 remaining in the third quarter. The two Pruitts in there for Cleveland. They're at the nine-yard line. they got a mismatch over here. They've got Logan on the left side on a bump-and-run situation. They're going outside they this time. Greg Pruitt starts inside, goes outside, gets to the line of scrimmage, gains a yard, and goes out of bounds at the eight. Chased out by Ted Hendricks and Mike Davis. Only a one-yard pickup. Second and goal from the eight-yard line. This crowd hollering for Cleveland to get another score. They lead by two. To get that nine-point advantage, it would be really an uphill climb for the Oakland Raiders based on what they've demonstrated offensively so far. And the fans really want them to get the touchdown. They're too... <laughs> Too concerned about the, the kicking game to, to rely on the fact that they'll get three points. Calvin Hill checks in for Cleveland. Hill is in the backfield, back to throw his sipe, and he fumbles the ball and a dive for it at the 13-yard line. And let's see who comes away with that football. It appears that Sipe got, got it. it back himself. He did. Sipe was bumped, fumbled the ball at the 13-yard line. Ted Hendricks was there, as he usually is, along with Matusak, but it's at the 12, and it's third and goal. at the Oakland 12-yard line. That's the second fumble by Sipe. Both have been recovered by the Browns. Sipe trying to call a play that'll get him a quick six. Logan to the left and Rucker to the right. Greg Pruitt, Calvin Hill in the backfield. Tight end, Ozzie Newsom on the right side. They got bump and run on both outside the receivers. The blitz is on. Again. They pick it there up. It goes. The pass to the end zone. Incomplete. He tried to get it to the slanting Logan. Owens was there. Burgess Osteen. Owens along with Wayne Osteen. Osteen did a good job. Really made a great play. Covered him well. It looks like they might go to the outside, but it, 
Instead, he went into the post, got the ball there, but uh, Osteen did a fine job of responding and reacting on the play. Well, this game is getting down to Don Cockroft. He missed from 46. He missed from 30. He hit one from uh, 30 yards. And then there was another miss and a bad snap. So he is one out of four. Dwayne Osteen is down in the end zone for the Oakland Raiders, shaken up. 2.45 remaining here in the third quarter. Cockroft will be trying a field goal of 30 yards. Cockroft has put a lot of suspense in the kicking game, hasn't he? He really has. His first attempt was from 46 yards. He missed. Osteen is up and walking off. And then he missed from uh, 30 yards. His field goal was good from 30 yards. And then he missed from 36. And this will be another 30-yard try. Jerry Sullivan has had difficulty getting the ball to the holder, Paul McDonald. We have 2.45 left in the third quarter. Cleveland leading 9-7, trying for three more. The snap from uh, center. It's a good one. They get it down, and the kick is up, and it is good. Cleveland adds to their lead, and now they're ahead by five. The score is 12-7 with 2.40 remaining in the third quarter. With the score, Cleveland 12 and the Oakland Raiders 7. Let's take time out. Welcome to the Office of the Future. Makes corrections right here on the display screen. Sends text electronically from your office, office to anywhere. Whole paragraphs, whole paragraphs with, with a touch of the old fashioned typewriter. Even adds and subtracts, multiplies and divides. Change margin, change page number, change heading, change column, change type style. style. The world of business machines. It's a confusing tangle of equipment, capabilities, and promises. But now, out of the confusion, emerges Exxon Office Systems Company. We've innovated such a advances in office technology as Quix, the intelligent typewriter, an electronic marvel with a host of automatic features that free secretaries from the monotony of routine office typing. We also make other advanced office products. But most of all, we want to help make your office more productive. Introducing Exxon Office Systems. For information, call 800-327-6666. In Florida, call 1-800-432-0800. Folks, just three weeks away, Super Bowl 15 from New Orleans, Louisiana. You'll hear it right here on most of these CBS Radio Network stations. Sunday, January 25th. One week after that, the Pro Bowl in Aloha Stadium in Honolulu, Hawaii. Oakland has not had a first down here in the second half. They've had the ball twice. They're about to get it for the third time as Cockroft will kick off. Keith Moody is deep along with Arthur Whittington inside the 15-yard line. Cockroft has been unable to get it any deeper than that all afternoon on this cold day in Cleveland, two degrees above zero. The kicker approaches the ball, and uh, he boots it high and short. Taken by Moody, smack on the 20 to the 25. He's out to the 30, dances to the 34-yard line, and he has stopped there. Oakland will go from there, 34. McDonald Odin, a tight end, was downfield to make the tackle. A 14-yard return. The Cleveland specialty teams have done a good job. Yeah, they have. They really have, considering the fact the ball is not being kicked very far. They're doing a good job of uh, covering and staying in their lanes and uh, uh, putting a lot of pressure on the return people of Oakland. Jim Plunkett is 8 out of 22, 75 yards. And uh, no touchdowns. He's had two intercepted. They stay with King and Van Egan and a first down pass by Plunkett. He looks, throws, and it is dropped by Cliff Branch out around the 45. He was going to throw the ball to the sideline to Kenny King and then seemed to change his mind in midstream. Yes, he did. And uh, the one problem with the pattern was that Branch did not anchor. He did not squat and stay in one position. He was moving inside, and for that reason, he thought he was going to stay in one spot through behind him, and the ball falls incomplete. 2-2-2 two, two, two remaining in the third quarter. And the score is 12-7 in favor of Cleveland. Plunkett operating into the wind in the third quarter is back to throw. Cleveland can't get to him. He runs out now and stops and throws and incomplete. Made a terrible throw as he tried to get it downfield. Down around the Cleveland 30-yard line out to Kenny King. I don't know why he didn't run the ball that time. He'd have run for enough yardage for the first down. He threw the ball off balance, falling away. Had no chance whatsoever to throw the ball downfield. 
to Kenny King, who was open downfield, but uh, he couldn't get the ball to him. Plunkett is not really sparkling this afternoon, is he? No, you know one thing about Plunkett, too. When he gets back into the pocket, he, he is in a good throwing position, and once he can't find his receiver, he squares the shoulders to the line of scrimmage. Very difficult for him to throw from that position. It is third down and ten from the Oakland 34. Yet another pass play coming up. And no pressure now. He runs out of the pocket and runs out to the 35-yard line. And he's running for the sideline to the 40. He throws the ball out of bounds at the 43. It's not quite enough for a first down on the third down run by Jim Plunkett. It is short of a first down by about a yard and a half as Plunkett ran out of the pocket. Then dropped the ball as he got to the sideline. And he is a yard short. It'll be a fourth down play. And unless Oakland wants to gamble, they'll have to punt with 2.03 remaining in the third quarter, and they indicate a punt. Yeah, no Charlie, ch Charlie Hall got to him. Yeah, no time in the world uh, at this stage of the game to gamble with a good kicker like Guy. He's got to kick the ball downfield, and hopefully they're going to be able to hold him and wind up with the, with the win in the fourth quarter. And then I, I think they're going to kind of go to work and do a much better job offensively. We have 2.03 left in the third quarter. Dino Hall is back at his 15. Waiting for the punt from Ray Guy. Todd Christensen will snap the ball. And Guy has been known to run on his own if he sees an opportunity with short yardage. This is fourth and one. He's done it in the past. Maybe he'll do it again here. You never know. From the Oakland 43, Guy walks into it and thumps it. Kicks it high. And Dino Hall took it on the 16. Fumble. Fumbled it. Picked it back up. He is hit and dropped at the 22-yard line. Cleveland will go from their 22. The Browns have played this entire game without a penalty being called against them. 153 remaining in the third quarter. Cleveland on top by the score of 12 to 7. Morris Bradshaw was downfield for the Oakland tackle after a six yard return. Later today, the CBS radio microphones will be in Atlanta for the Dallas game. And hopefully that'll get underway our broadcast on time at 3.45 Eastern time with Lindsey Nelson and Jim Kelly. And next Sunday, the action will be at 12.45 Eastern Time for the NFC Championship Game, 4.45 Eastern Time for the AFC Title Game. Cleveland is at their 22. Well, it looks like they, they ought to be able to throw the ball to the tight end if they, if they would throw the ball. The it give is to Mike Pruitt, and he comes out to the 25, and then a flag goes down, and a motion penalty is called against the Cleveland Browns. That's the very first penalty of the day against Cleveland. And we'll see if Oakland accepts the penalty. It was only a two-yard gain by Mike Pruitt. Dave Browning finished the playoff defensively. We'll see what kind of confidence Oakland has in their defense. I think they're going to make them go back. I think they'll take the penalty. Motion against Cleveland. We'll put the ball down at the 18 and make it first and 15. Number 43 on the offense. First and 15 at the Cleveland 18-yard line. They'll start the clock up with the snap of the ball. 144 remaining in the third quarter. Logan comes to the left. Rucker to the right. The two Pruitts are in the lineup. Greg and Mike. Ryan Seip, the quarterback, takes the ball, hands off to Greg Pruitt on a run right. He's out to the 20 and out of bounds at about the 23, the original line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and long for the Browns. Lester Hayes came up and ran him out, a six-yard gain. Second down and nine for Cleveland at their 24. Everybody's dropping balls and running out of bounds and stopping the clock game here in Cleveland on a cold afternoon. The temperature, two degrees. Cleveland's Brian Sipe on second down and nine. Under center. This would be a good time to run left. They here do. they come left with Greg Pruitt. He is out to the 27, and that's about all. What did you see over there, Hank? Well, the left, the linebacker on the right side was inside before the ball was snapped. And right about the time they snapped the ball, he got on the outside position of the tight end and made a great play. But he kind of uh, invited him to run that play and then closed it by being at the right spot at the right time. Third down and five for Cleveland at their own 28. On third and five, 
third down. Cleveland has made a first down only twice in 13 tries. Ozzie Newsom splits left. McKinney, the extra back, is in there covering him, and now Newsom comes in tight. Third down and five, and here is a bad fumble, snap fumble, from center, fumble. And a fumble and a scramble for the ball inside the 20. The snap from center went right through the hands of Brian Sipe on that third down play. Cleveland got it back, but they'll have to punt. It's fourth down. I don't think the center knew who was supposed to get the ball in the play. <laughs> Sipe was underneath him. I couldn't believe my eyes, Hank. I saw the ball squirt right through and nobody moved. It looked like slow motion out there. Exactly right, and nobody realized where the ball was or else Oakland would have had an opportunity, a great opportunity, to fall in a ball in that possession about the 19. And it was Mike Pruitt who was able to recover. Now with 30 seconds left in the quarter, Johnny Evans will punt. He'll get it away from about his 10. And the deep man is Keith Moody for Oakland. We haven't seen anything of Ira Matthews. There's the snap from center, and the kick has gotten away by Evans. Moody uh, let it bounce at the 45. I don't think he touched it. It rolls down inside the 25 and down to the Oakland 21, down to the 20-yard line, and is down by the Browns. And Moody, who decided not to catch the ball, almost had the ball deflect off of him, and that would have been disastrous. A 61-yard punt by Johnny Evans, but it wasn't his fault. Boy, what a play by the deep back that time. He lost about 20 yards on that, on that uh, by not kick, uh, receiving the kick. Hard to understand. He should have had a good jump on the ball. Keith Moody, number 26. It was a low kick. Uh, anytime it, it's kicked that low, you got to get a good jump and catch it and make as much out of the play as you possibly can. He really blew that one. Three seconds left in the third quarter. Oakland back at their 20-yard line. And on first down, trailing 12 to 7. Plunkett back to throw. Swings out a screen to Kenny King. He is hit and dropped for a loss of a yard. He's out of bounds at the end of the third quarter. It'll be second down and 11 when we come back for Oakland at their own 19. Clay Matthews ran Kenny King out of bounds. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Cleveland Browns 12 and the Oakland Raiders 7. Here's some good news about interest rates from GMAC, the financing people from General Motors. Even though the bank prime rate has gone higher and higher, you should know that most auto financing rates don't automatically go up with the prime rate. And that simply means this. The new Chevy, Pontiac, Olds, Buick, or Cadillac you've had your eye on is probably a lot more affordable than you think. Your GM dealer has the GMAC financing you need to make sure you get that GM car you're after. Check it out at your GM dealer today. The place? A hospital in Nebraska. A cancer specialist needs a complex analysis of his patient's blood. Doctor, when will I know? As soon as I hear from the lab in California. California? That's a thousand miles away. They ship the package by express mail service. We'll know tomorrow. Overnight, express mail service delivers. Thanks for the quick answer, Doc. Express Mail Next Day Service. Overnight from over 2,000 post offices, we deliver. Sponsored by your postal service. Now you can obtain the ultimate souvenir from the NFL's biggest event, the official Super Bowl 15-game program available through the mail. It contains dozens of action photos, a week-by-week -week review of the 1980s season, complete scoring reports of the Super Bowl teams. The same program that will be sold in New Orleans on January 25th when the AFC and NFC champions meet for the NFL title. You can order yours by sending a check or money order for $3.50 for each program to Super Bowl 15, Post Office Box 15, Houston, Texas, 77001. Super Bowl 15, Post Office Box 15, Houston, Texas, 77001. Allow three weeks for delivery after the game. Order your copy today. This message furnished by the National Football League. Oakland is back at their 19, second and 11, as we start the fourth quarter. And Plunkett delays the ball to Kenny King. He is hit and gets to the 20, spins to the 26-yard line. He made a good run after breaking the original tackle, and R.L. Jackson finally stopped the play. Let's pause five seconds for stations to identify themselves on the CBS radio network. This is WBBM Chicago News Radio 78. It's five above at O'Hare. Third down and five coming up for Oakland. This King ran for six yards. He has totaled 19 yards on 10 rushes. Third and four, actually. 
from the 26 of Oakland. They're operating with the wind here in the fourth quarter and trailing 12 to 7. Plunkett's going to put it up. He's back to throw. Sets up. Runs out of the pocket. Throws a little forward pass. It's caught by Van Egan. He's out to the 35 and out to the 39 for a first down. Clarence Scott tackled him. A little flip pass, a shovel pass by the quarterback Plunkett to Van Egan, who was all alone for a 13-yard gain. It looks like they practice that a lot during the <laughs> week, getting ready for this game, Jack. Pass to Van Egan came out to the 39-yard line of Oakland. first down. Oakland behind by only five. And on first down, Plunkett's going to put it up. He yes, looks sir. and looks. Branch open in the middle. Pass. He caught the ball at midfield down to the 45 and tackled at the Cleveland 42-yard line by Clay Matthews. Branch was all alone. Nobody could stay with him at all in a 19-yard game. Chester was also open on the play. He cleaned it out, but in the process was open down the field. Branch came underneath in the middle was wide open to get the ball right on the money and Branch really makes a super catch running up an inside pattern. Another first down for Oakland. And it is at the Cleveland 42-yard line. Derek Jensen is in with Kenny King and Van Egan is out for the Raiders. And on first down, here is a delay and an immediate tackle on King on the line of scrimmage and a gain of only one yard. For Cleveland, giving a lot of animation out there is R.L. Jackson. One-yard gain by Kenny King. Now we're under the 13-minute mark. 12.35 left in the game. Cleveland leading 12-7. to seven. They didn't get much on the draw play, but at least it'll be effective as far as slowing down the rush a little bit. And I'm sure that's one of the reasons they call the play. They were hoping they'd make some yardage, but that they didn't, why they still served a purpose. Second down and 10. Plunkett's going to put it up. Cleveland can't get to him. He throws over the middle, and it is caught inside the 20-yard line by Raymond Chester. Tackled by Tom Darden, and an Oakland first down. How did he get so free, Hank? Well, they're so concerned about Branch that he ran right down the seam, and uh, they were concerned about Branch, and they let him run free. They got the ball to him, made a fine catch, and a big gain for the Oakland Raiders. 11.53 left in this contest, but that was really a big play. The ball is to the Cleveland 15-yard line. Chester set up their first touchdown with a pass reception. And now the Oakland Raiders, trailing by five, are on the move. On first down, here is the running play to Van Egan, and one yard at the most up the middle, and Elvis Franks was there to make the Cleveland hit doing what you're talking about, Hank. They're running enough plays to keep Cleveland at home defensively. Yes, and that time Henry uh, Bradley, number 91, the man on the nose, did a good job of coming off the center's block and making a play on the inside run to Van Egan. 11-10 left in the game. Cleveland would like to make Oakland settle for a field goal try. Oakland's at the 14, second down and nine. At the 14 of Cleveland, that is. Plunkett back to throw. Cleveland can't get to him. Over the middle and incomplete and off the hands of the tight end. Raymond Chester was thrown high and away. He got a hand on it with Clarence Scott chasing him. And it'll be third down and nine. There's a crossing pattern to the tight end. He had a chance to get open on the play and was, but the ball was thrown a little bit too high. Third down and nine for the Oakland Raiders. A critical play coming here. Clock is stopped with 10.54 remaining in the football game. Raiders trail by five. They have third and nine at the Cleveland 14. And they have Branch and Chandler as the wide receivers. Here is Plunkett. Back to throw. Looks like blitz. Cleveland was offside. Blitz. The blitz, the sack, but Cleveland was offside. Plunkett was sacked all the way back at the 26. Cleveland was offside, and that'll make it third down and four. Clarence Scott is the one who came racing through on the safety blitz and made the hit. You know, I, we see so much of that. There's the, the call by the official, offside, Cleveland. But one thing that you have to do offensively, you have to keep changing the count, changing the rhythm so that the defense doesn't get good anticipation. And uh, they're not going enough on quick counts. It's a big play, Hank, to the point where now, if Oakman were to rush and not get the first down on third down, they'd be close enough to try to rush on fourth down. That's if they right. didn't want to settle for the field goal. Yep. 
Brown's second penalty. The ball is moved to the Cleveland nine, making it third down and four. They ought to run here because they got two downs to get four yards. And uh, if they take that approach. It's Jensen in the backfield with Kenny King. Here is Plunkett back to throw on third and four. And he throws and it's caught at the six. A tackle has broken the play to the five down to the three. First and goal for Oakland on a good effort by Kenny King. And that's something they do very unusually. And uh, that time they caught him by surprise. Threw the ball to the back. Instead of trying to throw the ball outside, King did a good job of running, and they pick up the necessary yardage for the first down. Great play. First and goal at the three-yard line with 10.25 remaining in the game. Kenny King hauled it in. And then, after being hit at the six, he went down to the three-yard line for a first down. Oakland trying to go on top. First and goal from the three. Van Egan is back in there. Right side. Van Egan over the right side, and he got about half the distance. He's about a yard and a half away. R.L. Jackson, the primary tackler for the Cleveland Browns. It'll be second and goal to go. 12 to 7, Cleveland leading. 9.58 remaining in the game. They stop the clock as they unpile. The ball is at the one yard line. Now they wind it up again. Van Egan has rushed 13 times, 22 yards, one touchdown. He likely will get it again. Second and goal from the one. They ought to run right again, Jack. The give to Van Egan running right. He is hit and gets to the goal line, but not in. And it'll be third and goal. Third and goal at the one. So Cleveland... Still has a chance of avoiding the touchdown. Dick Ambrose, the tackler. That ball is very, very close to the goal line, just inches away. Nine and a half left in the game. The ball an inch away from the Cleveland goal line. And now a timeout is called as Plunkett goes to the bench and talk it over. 9.26 remaining in the game. A timeout on the field with the score. Cleveland 12 and Oakland 7. This winter, keep track of the weather from the inside of your home with the January bargain of the month from True Value Hardware Stores. Hi, Pat Summerall to tell you the Taylor Indoor Outdoor Thermometer for just 466 mounts on a wall inside your home while the sensing bulb goes outside so you can read both the indoor and outdoor temperatures at a glance from the comfort of your home. Then you can dress for the weather and be prepared before you step out into the cold. The Taylor All-Weather Thermometer from True Value Hardware Stores has an attractive black pebble grain finish with decorative silver trim. And right now you can get the Taylor Indoor-Outdoor Thermometer for just $4.66 as the January bargain of the month while supplies last at participating True Value Hardware Stores and home centers. And tell them Pat Summerall sent you. Watching Jim Plunkett is uh, an, an uneasy experience. He doesn't impress you, and the next thing you know, he beats you. Yeah, and there again, I, I, he's not a, not as a uh, percentage passer, a high percentage passer. They're only concerned about getting the ball down the field, and uh, when the time comes to do that, he's done a very good job. And of course, I think they've been very conservative. They were conservative, justifiably so, going into the win. Now they've opened up and did a good job moving the ball down the field. Two tight ends, Van Egan and Jensen in the backfield. Third and goal from inches away, Plunkett. Starts Jensen in motion, gives to Van Egan. Touchdown, his second of the day, and Oakland goes back on top. Oakland goes back on top by the score of 13 to 12. Van Egan with a one-yard run. Less than that, actually. And the Browns are going to have to score again if they want to win. Art Shell led the way for Van Egan. And the Raiders are on top by the score of 13 to 12, and it's really quiet here in the Cleveland Stadium. 9:22 remaining in the game. A little sadness in the air right now. Cleveland will be operating into the wind. Well, now it's shifted around a little bit and sort of swirling and crosswind. Here's the extra point try by Chris Barr. They get it down, and he gets it 
through, and it's good, and it's 14 to 12 in favor of the Raiders. We have 9.22 left in the game, and with a score, the Raiders 14, Cleveland 12. Let's take time out. The place, a hospital in Nebraska. A cancer specialist needs a complex analysis of his patient's blood. Doctor, when will I know? As soon as I hear from the lab in California. California? That's a thousand miles away. They ship the package by express mail service. We'll know tomorrow. Overnight, express mail service delivers. Thanks for the quick answer, Doc. Express mail next day service. Overnight from over 2,000 post offices, we deliver. Sponsored by your postal service. Cleveland. In this third quarter, has had two field goals, and Oakland which had a touchdown in the second quarter, gets their second score. Both by Van Egan. The kick is quite short. It bounces inside the 25. Dino Hall picks it up on the 17 to the oh. 20. He's to the 30, outside to the 35, and out to the 41-yard line. Dino Hall with a big run, and it's a good thing Oakland got busy and caught him. Chris Barr, who kicked the ball, made the tackle at the Cleveland 41-yard line, a 24-yard return by Dino Hall, and it was wide open there for a while. The Oakland specialty teams have really not done a good job on, of covering the kicks at all in this game, Jack, and it's uh, provided Cleveland with a great opportunity to get good field position with 9.09 left in this contest with a score 14-12 to 12 Oakland. Sype trots in from the sideline where Coach Sam Retigliano is sweating this one out. 9.09 left in the game. Out they come with Logan going to the left and Reggie Rucker to the right. Greg Pruitt, Mike Pruitt are in the backfield. Ozzie Newsom, the tight end, is on the right side. Well, they got buff and run on the outside people. I'd bang the it up there. The blitz is on, and Sipe gets help and throws downfield and incomplete. He tried to get it out to Greg Pruitt. Cleveland offensive line did a very good job of picking up that blitz. And Sipe did a little sidestep and then threw the ball off target incomplete. Rod Martin was covering on the play for Oakland. Sipe is 12 out of 31, 157 yards, and no touchdowns. He has had two intercepted. They live by the pass, Henry. Yes, they do. And uh, you have to admire their approach. They know what they, they can do. They know what they like to do, and they continue to try to do it. Now Newsom splits to the left side, and Sipe is back to throw, steps up and throws a poor pass low and away to Pruitt, incomplete. He was being covered in rather heavy fashion by Mike Davis, and it's third and ten for Cleveland. Earlier, the offside penalty against Cleveland on a safety blitz, where they did indeed sack Plunkett, was a pivotal play. It was third and nine. That made it third and four. Then the pass play gave Oakland the first down. Subsequently, they got the touchdown, which put them on top. Reggie Rucker, the last time, was open on this right side on Lester Hayes, ran an outside pattern and then broke it inside. Lester stayed outside, and they had a good chance to hit him on the inside. There he is again. Right back to throw over the middle and incomplete on the crossing pattern. Incomplete down around the Oakland 40, and Lester Hayes was covering in fine fashion as they try to get the ball to Ricky Feature, the third wide receiver, and Dwayne Osteen was also there defensively, and it's fourth down, and Cleveland has been able to do very little in the first down department here in the second half. They're 0 for 6 on third down tries. The flight of the ball on the part of Sipe has been very good. You know, he's thrown a lot of good passes considering the fact that he's throwing into the wind. I don't know what it's like on the field, but I just imagine it's very difficult, but he's getting the ball where it's supposed to be pretty well. Moody is deep along with Ira Matthews now for Oakland, waiting for the punt. And the kick by Johnny Evans. He hangs this one high, and a fair catch is called for by Moody. He takes it on the Oakland 27. We have 8.45 left in the game. The Raiders lead by two with a score. Oakland 14 and Cleveland 12. Let's take time out.
time. And Jack Buck with you from the cold city of Cleveland. Two degrees above zero the last time we checked. Hank, the play calling on the part of the Oakland Raiders, leading by two with 8.45 left at their own 27, is going to be very critical. Well, they, they, you know, they have a lot of confidence. They have a very low risk kind of an offense from a running standpoint. They continue to run lead plays. They feel they have a good, big, strong offensive line. They keep sticking it at you. And uh, here they go with a lead play on the first play. Kenny King comes out across the 30-yard line. He is dropped at the 31. And he was hit by Matthews and by R.L. Jackson. King's slow getting up, going back to the huddle. And he picked up four yards on that jaunt. You know, the Oakland Raiders so far in this game, in most games that you see them play, they probably have about five or six running plays in a game, and that's about all. And the rest of the time, they worry about pass protection and getting the ball downfield. For that reason, they don't make a lot of mistakes offensively, and they look for you to make the mistake and then take advantage of it. They're at their 31, and it's second down and six. They stay on the ground again, but this time, Arthur Whittington is nailed after he gained a yard at the most. R.L. Jackson and Dick Ambrose, the two inside linebackers, we're there to meet him. 7.55 left in the game and the clock running. Another lead play. Basically, that's all they've run here this afternoon. Lead play meaning that the, if the fullback and halfback are in their respective positions, the ball is given to the fullback. The halfback will lead the fullback into the designated hole, block anybody who shows up in the area, and uh, they get a straight-ahead surge with the offensive line who is big and strong, and that's the way where they feel they can run the ball the best. Third and five from the 32. Bucket back, it back to the throw. Back. He drops it off to Whittington. Catches it. Goes to the 40 for a first down. And he is tackled out at the Oakland 42-yard line. Whittington sneaked out of that backfield. Charlie Hall tackled him, but it's an Oakland first down with 7-10 left in the game. And that's uh, really been a factor here. They've thrown some key passes to the backs uh, on possession kind of passes with the linebackers getting good depth, but they're not concerned Going into the game, they threw very few passes like that to the backs. And this afternoon has been very effective. They're at the Oakland 42 on the first down. That was the first catch of the day by Whittington. Run left. Here's the running play to the left and no gain. No gain at all. It was stopped cold by Elvis Franks, the defensive end uh, for Cleveland. And running with the ball was uh, Derek Jensen. Second down and ten. Alzado is out at the moment for the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland almost held them on the previous series, but they got the first down on third and five. We're down to 6.15 left in this game, and it's second and 10 Oakland from their own 41. Plunkett's back to throw. Play action A lot of time. It's wide open for him to run. Instead, he is sacked. He is sacked back at the 33-yard line, and what a big play that was. Elvis Franks got him. He should have run Hank. He could have come out beyond midfield. That's the first time they've sacked him. Yes, and he's been very undecisive. You know, he, he should have. He saw he was in trouble with a play-action pass. He should have just taken off and run because he had a lot of running room on the right side. Man, it was wide open. Instead, he tried to find somebody to throw the ball to, Instead, and, and during that period of time, uh, he was found by the rusher, Elvis Franks. And now it's third and 19. All the way back at the Oakland 33-yard line. Third down and 19. The sun is shining. It's very cold here in Cleveland. 5.50 remaining in this game. Oakland on top, 14 to 12. And Clunk calls another timeout. Now the Oakland Raiders have but one remaining. We have 5.45 left in the game. There's a timeout on the field with the score. The Oakland Raiders 14 and the Cleveland Browns 12. Once you've tried it, you'll agree. The Red Devil Pad Pater Kit from True Value Hardware Stores is a stroke of genius. Hi, Pat Summerall to tell you the painting pad applies paint faster and will save you work because it eliminates stray bristles and brush marks that might otherwise mar the paint finish. With the Red Devil Deluxe Pad Painter Kit for just $6.88, you get a 9-inch pad painter and a sash trimmer, plus a metering paint tray and ladder bracket. And True Value Hardware Stores also feature a full selection of paint and accessories, including spackling compounds for filling holes and cracks, and caulking for sealing around windows and doors. For professional-looking results, be sure to properly prepare the surfaces to be painted. And get the Red Devil Deluxe Pad Painter Kit for just $6.88 from participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Center. It's 
it's a fact that 24 of the last 32 Cleveland Browns games have been decided in the last two minutes. We may be headed for that sort of ending to this playoff game. 5.45 left. The ball is at the Oakland 33. The Raiders have it, and it's third and 19. They have the lead, 14 to 12 over Cleveland. He probably went over to the sideline to, to get a decision either whether he should run the ball here or throw it on a third and 19. They He's delay it to Van Egan. He comes out across the 35, 40, out to the 45, and tackled short of a first down out at the 47-yard line. That was a good call. They didn't want to take a chance of coughing up the football by throwing it. Decided to run, and then the, the big decision is what kind of a running play you're gonna, you, are you going to use? Uh, and that was a good choice because they went back, simulated pass, and then ran the draw play to Van Egan. Didn't make enough for the first down, but he got in good field position, and the way, the way a guy can kick the football, he might wind up putting Cleveland in the soup in a bad situation. This will be the ninth punt by Ray Guy, who has averaged 40 yards a kick. We have exactly five minutes left in the game. Dino Hall waits back inside his 15 for Cleveland. Sullivan or Todd Christensen will snap the ball. Guy will get it away from about his 35. He does and kicks it extremely high, not too deep. It bounces near the sideline inside the 25-yard line and is down by Oakland. Cleveland will get the ball at their own 25 with 4.39 remaining. That was only a 29-yard punt by Ray Guy. He could have used a better one than that, hey? Yeah, you would think he would have kicked it better than that, but I think what he tried to do, he tried to get it up high so they could get good coverage, and in the process, it slid off his foot, and uh, he didn't get a very good kick out of that punting attempt. Well, who knows? This may be the last time Cleveland has the ball. 4.39 remaining. They trail by two. 14 to 12, and they have the ball at their own 25-yard line. A long way to go. Brian Seip checks into the huddle. They had three incompleted passes and a punt the last time Cleveland had possession. Out they come, and they split Ozzie Newsom left. They send Rucker and Logan to the right side. Oakland shows the blitz back to throw is Seip. He steps up and runs to the 25, to the 30, to the 35. Whoa. The ball falls Whoa. loose inside the 30. A wild scramble for it. It's recovered at about the 24. Oakland thinks they have the ball. And uh, I think they do. The possession is for Oakland at the Cleveland 24 on the Brian Seip fumble. The ball flew backwards about 10 yards when Seip was hit. And for the Raiders, it was recovered by the cornerback, Otis McKinney, at the Cleveland 24. And there's, that, and there's that same old thing, carrying the ball in the wrong arm. He got hit from the inside, ball pops loose, and uh, Oakland has possession on the 24-yard line. At the Cleveland 24, with 426 remaining in this game, Oakland's running game. Will be called upon now to chew up the yards and eat up the clock. 4.26 left. They're at the Cleveland 24. They're going to run left. Plunk it with Van Egan. Gives it to Van Egan. And he runs to the right and he is hauled down and he gained only about a yard. When you consider the score, 14 to 12, with Oakland leading by two, even a field goal would be extremely valuable, would force Cleveland to go for the touchdown to win this playoff game. And now we have exactly four minutes left in the game, and it's second down and nine, Oakland at the Cleveland 23. Out come the Raiders in no hurry to snap the ball. They use time on the 30-second clock. Plunk it with a long count. He gives the ball to his running back, and down inside the 20-yard line, down to the 15 it goes with Van Egan carrying. He's a workhorse, sure-handed with the ball. And it's going to be third down and only one for Oakland, and they may clinch it on this drive, Hank. Yeah, you're absolutely right. They're controlling the line of scrimmage, getting a good surge from their offensive lineman. As a, there was an excellent run by Van Egan. He's not a great speed runner, but he's a very determined, strong runner, good balance, and uh, reads very, very well, has good vision. He's carried 19 times, 46 yards. Took that one to the Cleveland 15, making it third and one. And now we have exactly three minutes left in the game as Oakland tries to get the first down. They lead by two. 
Plunkett gives the ball to Van Egan again. He is hit and gets about a half a yard on the play. Appears to be short by inches on that third down carry, and Clay Matthews hit him. The clock continues to run, and now they stop as they measure. The Oakland players think they have a first down inside the 15-yard line. Referee Ben Dreith will separate things and determine that. It looks like uh, they might be just a few inches short from here, Jack. I'm not... That's what, I th that's what I thought. They measure in the vicinity of the Cleveland 14-yard line. And Oakland is short by inches. It's fourth down and inches to go. The field goal wouldn't do them that much good, and it might be blocked. It looks like they're going to try to stay on the ground and get it. Meanwhile, when Elliott is hard at work, Preparing a Super Bowl special, you'll be anxious to hear, a 20-part series capturing the excitement of, of NFL seasons past and present. Hear it here, Super Bowl weekend, January 24th and 25th. Fourth down Oakland, the game on the line here. They lead 14-12 to 12 with 2.35 left in the game. It's fourth and inches at the Cleveland 14. They probably Plunkett give it to Van, the club. Van Egan straight ahead. Jensen left goes side. in motion to give to Van Egan. He is hit and did not get it. The ball goes over to Cleveland as he didn't get enough forward progress, and the ball will go over to Cleveland on fourth down with 2.22 remaining in the game. R.L. Jackson and Dick Ambrose met Van Egan head up. He didn't the, get it, did he, Hank? No, I don't think he did. Uh, it all depends on how they mark it, though, the forward progress. I don't think they made it. They're going to uh, measure again. And they have stopped the clock with 2.22 remaining. Cleveland trailing by two points. They bring in the sideline markers. It appears it is exactly where it was before. And they are indeed short. The ball goes over to Cleveland with 2.22 remaining. They went to the well once too often on that play. They send a man in motion to the left side. And they've always run to the same side where the man in motion went on short yardage situations. That time, the Cleveland Browns anticipated the play, got a good jump off the line of scrimmage and stopped them on the fourth down situation. Now they have possession, first and 10 on about the 14-yard line. Having fumbled last time, Cleveland gets the ball back again. 2.22 remaining. They have three timeouts left. They're at their own 15, and they trail Oakland by two points, 14 to 12. Greg Pruitt and Mike Pruitt are in the backfield for Brian Seip. Oakland putting on some pressure. Sight back to throw. Throws short to the sideline. Incomplete. It bounced into the arms of Reggie Rucker. Incomplete. With 2.17 remaining in the game. Sype in the second half has not compiled very good stats. Whereas in the first half where quite a few passes were dropped. In this half he has been more off target. Overall he's 12 out of 34. No touchdowns. Two intercepted. 157 yards. And it is second down and 10. 2.17 remaining. In the second half, Brian Sipe is 4 out of 14. He has three wide receivers, including Ricky Feature. And Sipe almost fell as he's back to throw. Throws long downfield. The man comes back and catches it at the 40. And he is tackled at the ankle. Ozzie Newsom, he was going to score until the Oakland man tackled him at the Cleveland 44-yard line. The pass was underthrown, and as a result, Ozzie Newsom was able to come back and catch it over Otis McKinney. And then Newsom started upfield. It was a 30-yard gain. He would have scored, but I'll be darned if McKinney didn't reach out and grab him by the ankle and drop him at the Cleveland 44 with exactly two minutes remaining in the game. The Browns have a first down. For a preview of the NFC Divisional Playoff game between the Cowboys and the Falcons, let's go to Lindsey Nelson in Atlanta. The Atlanta Falcons and the Dallas Cowboys are on the field for their pregame drill here at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, and the excitement is mounting for this NFC Playoff game. Atlanta, of course, clad in their red jerseys. And that allows the Dallas Cowboys to wear their white with the blue trim, the jerseys that they much prefer to wear. They hate to wear the blues, and so they get the white here this afternoon because of the fact that the home team is wearing their regular red jerseys. Two outstanding quarterbacks will be facing each other. Steve Wojtkowski, who completed 55.5% of his passes, had 31 touchdown passes. He started every game an outstanding year. And on the ground, William Andrews led the rushers for Atlanta. 1,308 yards on the ground. He averaged almost five yards per carry. 
the Dallas Cowboys, well, they are the Dallas Cowboys, who battle back, Danny White quarterbacking them, Robert Newhouse, Tony Dorsett, of course, they're outstanding Russia. Dorsett had 1,185, an average of 4.3, he's a big play ball player, we're going to have a fine day for football here in Atlanta, Lindsey Nelson with Jim Kelly returning to Jack Buck in Cleveland. Thank you, Lindsay. First down for the Browns at their own 44. Two minutes left. Keep in mind, the Browns need only a field goal to win and eliminate Oakland. The Raiders lead 14 to 12. And a saving tackle moments ago by Otis McKinney on the underthrown ball to Ozzie Newsom. Out they come with Rucker and Logan to the right. Newsom, the tight end, lined up to the left side. The two Pruitts are in the backfield for Seip. Seip is back to throw. On first down, he throws long downfield into heavy coverage, incomplete to Greg Pruitt. Coming over to help out on the play for Oakland was Burgess Owens, teaming with Dwayne Osteen to stop the play. Hendricks that, Hendricks that time was blitzing from the outside, had a good shot at Sipes, but slipped and fell as he was trying to make the rush. And uh, for that reason, Sipes was able to get rid of the ball down deep to Greg Pruitt, but it was far down beyond his reach and falls incomplete. Oakland leading 14 to 12 with 154 remaining in this game. The Browns still have three timeouts. They're back at their 44-yard line. Two wide receivers are to the right side. Newsom would be a good guy to throw the ball to here. Here's Seip on a quarterback draw. It doesn't work. Matusak gets to him, tackles him. He sprints loose. And comes across the 45, out near the 48-yard line. The play had been whistled dead at the 44. It'll be third and ten. Willie Jones and John Matusak stop that play. And the ball is at the Cleveland 44, third and ten. They run the clock again, 145 left. Cleveland has to pick up a first down. And on uh, 14 tries, they've been able to get a first down only twice. Out they come. Newsom splits left. Rucker and Logan, the other wide receivers. A quick snap and sight back to throw. He does throw downfield, incomplete. The intended, there's a flag. And interference is called against Oakland at their 45-yard line. Called against Wayne Osteen, against Reggie Rucker. And a first down for Cleveland with 119 left. Steen was called for interference at the Oakland 45-yard line. That was on a third down play. That was a tough call, Jack. It didn't look to me like there was pass interference on the play, but evidently there was because the official was right there on the spot, was very decisive, and made the call. They mark it down uh, at the 49, and they call it contact. an Number illegal 25. chuck. And a first down for Cleveland at the Cleveland 49. We have 119 remaining in the game. First down for the Browns. That was the fifth penalty against Oakland, 46 yards. An illegal chuck call against Dwayne Osteen as he impeded the progress of Reggie Rucker downfield. Logan goes to the left, and Rucker comes to the right. Newsom lines up on the right side. Two Pruitts in the backfield. Sight back to throw. Fades left, throws long. Greg, Greg Pruitt has it at the 30. Out of bounds at the Oakland 28-yard line. A first down for Cleveland on the pass to Greg Pruitt. 112 left. A 23-yard pickup. That's the second time they've done that. They bring Logan across the middle. He goes down about 12 yards and break into the middle area, which occupies the corner and the safety man, and then Pruitt on a linebacker down to the deep corner. He licked him again, specifically uh, Rod Martin, and it's another big play for the Cleveland Browns with 112 left in the contest. They had the penalty on third down. They kept it going. They only need a field goal. Cleveland trailing 14 to 12, 112 left in the game. End of the game is Calvin Hill for the Browns. They're at the Oakland 28-yard line. Newsom is split right. Oakland's got a four-man rush. And Hendricks is blitzing on the play. To throw. He throws to the sideline. And Ozzie Newsom can't get it. Down at the 20-yard line, he's out of bounds. He caught it, but he was out of bounds, incomplete. And Oakland was coming after Brian Seif. Oakland's going to have to get a severe rush 
and throw her for a loss or make some kind of a big play defensively or else it could be in very serious trouble. The defensive lineman Dave Browning was complaining to the referee about holding on the part of the Browns. 106 left in the game. A lot of time left and Cleveland had three timeouts left. They trail by two, 14 to 12. It's second down and 10 at the Oakland 28 yard line. They're much too far out now for a field goal. Three wide receivers, including Ricky Peacher, five defensive backs for Oakland, in fact, six. Here's Sight back to throw, delays the ball to Greg Pruitt, gets outside to the 25 to the 20. He's down to the 15 yard line, down to the 14. A Cleveland first down with the clock running down to 55 seconds. They stop it with 56 seconds remaining in the game. The running play, the draw to Mike Pruitt is taking the ball down to the Oakland 14 yard line on a 14 yard run. With the score, timeout Cleveland. With a uh, pass to Newsom out to the 44 with the help of a chucking call against Oakland with a pass to Greg Pruitt down to the 28 with a run by Mike Pruitt down to the 14. The Cleveland Browns have a first down at the Oakland 14. 56 seconds left in the game. The Raiders leading by two, 14 to 12. You got to run a handoff right at the linebackers here. Straight ahead play. If they're going to run, they Get do. to Mike Pruitt straight ahead, and he is down for about two yards, perhaps, near the 12 of Oakland. The clock stays at 49 seconds, and a timeout is called by the Browns. And now each team has one timeout remaining. 49 seconds left in the game. The ball is at the Oakland 13. Time Here's sight back to throw. On second down, throws into the end zone, and it is intercepted, intercepted by Oakland in the end zone with 41 seconds remaining in the game. Cleveland with a chance to kick a winning field goal. Throws the ball into the end zone. Sipe slaps his palms up against his helmet. The pass has been intercepted in the end zone by Oakland. Cleveland has only one timeout remaining. The Raiders will have won the game by the score of 14 to 12 as Mike Davis caught the ball deep into the end zone. Hank Stram, I can't believe it. That's the way Cleveland lost the Minnesota game. Yeah, that is incredible. It was a crossing pattern with the hope and expectation of getting the ball to the tight end. Uh, if from here, you couldn't tell whether the ball was thrown a little bit behind or what happened. Actually, uh, he threw it out in front, and Mike Davis just did a super job of covering on the play. It was the only explanation you can give. Give, give uh, Davis a lot of credit for the beautiful play that he makes on the interception. All Oakland has to do now is snap the ball a couple of times. They'll win it. They snap it to Plunkett. The clock runs. It's down to 38, 37, 36. Cleveland calls timeout. And they have used their final timeout of the game. And the Oakland Raiders snap the ball one more time. The clock runs down. That will be the final snap of this game. Oakland will have eliminated Cleveland from the playoffs. And Hank Stram, I can't believe it. Cleveland at first down at the Oakland 13-yard line, or 14-yard line. They picked up a yard on a running play. They had timeouts remaining, but that didn't mean anything. All they had to was do was run the ball, get it into field goal position, kick it, and either win it or lose it. They didn't have to throw the ball. No, they really didn't. They were in a very great position. They just set it up and kicked the field goal, at least try the field goal. They, never, they took themselves out of that opportunity and uh, wound up losing the football game because of it. It is unbelievable, and there you have it. The AFC Divisional Playoff game between the Browns and the Raiders has ended with the final score. Oakland 14 and Cleveland 12.